I was seven, I wore these gloves. They held this stick. Well, these skates carried me over the blue line. We won the championship. And now, it's all yours. Cool. Oh, <laughs> and this mouth guard. I'll get my own. Thanks. <laughs> the fifth season is when spirit for the game gets passed down. That's why we're proud to support over 5,000 teams. Drive. Hey! 100% passion. 100% effort. But women in sports get only 5% of the attention. Hey! Canada's dairy farmers believe women in sports should be seen and heard loud and clear. With fueling women's champions, we're shining a light on women athletes at every level. Hey! Join us. Hashtag champion her. And the captain, number 27, Tara Watson. And then for the Blades, number 33, Genevieve Laca. Ladies and gentlemen, now I ask you to please rise and remove your caps for the Blades of Canadian and American National Anthems.
if you're just joining us, do I miss any joins then? Two minutes into the first. Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this broadcast of CHL Live, already in progress. This is the Boston Blaze vs. Branson Thunder. My name is Chris Knobloch, joined by my broadcast partner, Steve Ventresca. And Steve, you have the starters for us here from New England Sports Center in Marlboro, Massachusetts. Starting for the home team, Boston Blades, Meg Myers, alongside with Christina Brown down the middle, Megan Shea now joining that top group. On the right wing side, Tara Watchhorn and Drew Burns will be on the point tonight in Genevieve will cast in net. As for the visiting Brampton Thunder, they will be starting with Jamie Lee, Rattray, Styles, and Jones. The top line that torched the Blades a week ago with Fortino and Burchard on the point and Erica Howe in net for the Thunder. This is, of course, the fifth straight game between the Boston Blades and the Brampton Thunder. This has been a six-game series with a break in between for the Blades as they had the week off last week for American Thanksgiving. Yes, we have to say American Thanksgiving here on the broadcast. But the Blades have been off for a week. Brampton was up playing up another opponent. They are back down here, and we are finishing with games five and six of this so-called Thunder Bladies series. Brampton has outscored the Blades by quite a bunch in the first four games, starting with a two-to-one defeat for Boston that saw them have their first lead of regulation in this, this season and has gone from there between the Blades and Brampton. If you look at some, the first four games of this series, though, the best two games that the Blades played in the series were at home. The two times they were up in Ontario, Brampton's skill took over, and they blew the Blades out of the water. But the two games here were close. I'd like to see a much better effort out of the Blades tonight. CWHL Live is presented by Canada's Dairy Farmers Fueling Women's Champions Program. With sports making up less than with women's sports making up less than five percent of sports media coverage, and women's sports getting zero point four percent of all sports sponsorship money, Fueling Women's Champions is dedicated to turning around these statistics by directly tackling challenges that women and girls face in pursuing sports through their partnerships with organizations like the CWHL. We are underway here from New England Sports Center. A puck already dumped back behind the Brampton net. Erica Howe plays it around up to up and out of the zone, and now the puck goes end-to-end. -end. Jamie Lee Trey for Brampton puts a shot on Genevieve LeCasse, save, and the referee lost sight of it there, and it will be whistled dead as the puck did, puck did pop out to the near side boards, but there will be a face-off in Boston's defensive zone. And that cross-eyes pass there from Jess Stiles to Jamie Lee Trey, that's what killed the Blades the last time they met here at the Sports Center. Face off one by Brampton. Now Fortino. Fortino looks for a shot on net, tipped over by Jones, but saved by LaCasse, and we'll do it again in the Boston zone. And the Blitz defensive group has really played well as of late. I know the scoreboard doesn't exactly show it, but the minutes that Tyra Watchhorn and Drew Burns log as the top defensive pairing is staggering, and they do an excellent job against the top lines night in and night out. We'll actually be tracking it uh, tomorrow in what we're calling the Watchy Watch, so we're going to see how uh, long Tara Watchhorn is on the ice floor. Courtney Burchard takes the puck for Brampton, sticks it back behind the Boston net. It's played by Maggie DeMazny. Up to Aaron Kickham, but now back behind the Boston net where it will be recovered by Retray. Retray looking for a centering pass, finds Fortino. Now Fortino over to Bouchard along the near side. Over to Jones off the boards with the centering pass for jo by Jones, but is played away by Duncan, and Duncan will look to clear. She will with help from Rachel Farrell. Styles recovers it at center ice. Now Farrell looking for help, can't get it, and Jess Jones will push the puck back into the Boston zone. Now Jenna McParland. Brings it back behind the Boston net. Centering pass loop for Rebecca Vint. Shot goes just wide of the net, and it will be played back behind the net by Brampton. Now Vint looks for a centering pass to Edney. Edney's shot goes right to the stick of Olivia Keefe, who attempts to clear it, but now it will be kept in by LaRock. LaRock, cross-ice pass off the post by McIntosh, who we're seeing her first ice time here in Boston for Brampton, and it will be cleared out by the Blades. Now kick him across the center ice. Loses possession of the puck, and McParland will bring it back across the center line. Now McIntosh looking for help. Over to McParland. McParland shot, saved by LaCasse. Rebound, save again by LaCasse. Save again by LaCasse. Great save there. She went sprawling to her right side, and will have a face-off in the Boston zone. That was an Olympic-quality save by Genevieve LaCasse. Unbelievable three saves, actually, by Genevieve LaCasse. She got the first one, and the rebound was right there. I believe McParland put it back on that the next two times. Genevieve LaCasse kicking out the right foot and then the blocker hand before covering it up. Unbelievable chance after McIntosh had a wide open net getting her first action as you mentioned, Chris, and just not being able to capitalize, losing an edge. 
on that good centering pass. Face off one by the Blades. Puck squirts back to the rear boards. It's recovered by Brampton, but getting to it first is Sadie St. Germain. She chips it over to the far side. Recovered by Brampton. That is King looking for help. She has Fielding Montgomery with her. Montgomery finds King back behind the net, but getting in the way is Tara Watchorn, who chips it to the near side. Loose puck behind the Boston net. Nicole Giannino is there first. Over to Clara St. Germain. Chips it up off the glass, looking for Ellie Tremblay, but getting there first is Richards. And now the puck will be sent cross ice by the Blades. And no icing is the call as Sadie St. Germain was back. Now Giannino whiffs on an attempt to keep it in. Burns comes in to help, but the puck is over the blue line. Boston has to retreat. Now King. Watchorn is in her way. Watchorn gets a stick in there, and the puck will be taken by Sadie St. Germain. Now Watchorn at her own blue line. She has Burns with her, but instead chooses to backhand it off the boards for Sadie St. Germain. Over to Brown. Brown. Shot goes wide of Howe's net and bounces around back behind the Brampton net. Fighting forward in the corner is Brown. She has help from Shea. Puck squirts out to Jones. Jones sends it a saucer all the way into the Boston zone, and that will be icing on Brampton. In three minutes into the game, and already the Blades have been pinned in their own end for a long period of time, and finally they get a little offensive rush. Claire St. Germain keeping the puck in, beating out that icing call, and forcing Howe to come out of her net and play it around. But... Coach McCloskey putting out his top line here, Brown, Myers, and Shea to look to get the offense going here early in the game. It's the only line that the Blades can deploy that has scored. Each one of them has scored, with Myers and Brown both scoring once, Brown with a shootout winner, and Megan Shea with two goals on the season. Puck now along the near side, Brampton's end. Scores back behind the net, covered by Fortino. She ships it up. But a loose puck on a bad pass there, and it will be covered by Boston. Maggie DeMaisey at center ice. Now Fortino in front of her own net. Shea pressures her but she chips it over to Burchard. Burchard cross ice for Fortino. Breaks out of the zone. Now all alone Jamie Lee Retre on Lacasse. Saved by Genevieve Lacasse. And getting back there to help is Sarah Duncan on another great save by Lacasse. Yeah and she wanted that puck sooner. Retre came streaking out tapping her stick on the ice. She had all the defensemen beat. I don't know where the defensemen were for the Blades but Genevieve Lacasse coming up big once again in that for the Blades. Both teams offer a change. Now Burchard will bring the puck out of her own zone. She's looking for help. Retray is in with her. Two on two. Now two on three as Keith gets back for Boston. Burchard will bring it all the way around and chips it back to McIntosh at the blue line. Now Retray. She tries to keep it in, but Aaron Kickham will clear it out for the Blades. She has Rachel Farrell with her and is harassed by Retray. Puts a shot on net. Sticked away by Howe. And puck bounces out to the near side. Now Vint. Brings it across the blue line. Looking for help with McIntosh. Chips it on Lacasse's net instead, and it's sticked away by Lacasse. Watchhorn, back to play the puck. Gets to it in the near side. Looks to clear it out. Sends it across ice to Drew Burns, who almost loses a handle on it, but instead will make the blue line, and now looks for help. Burns chips it up to kick him. Kick him opts to send it into the Brampton zone, and the Blades go off for a change. Just about five minutes gone here in the first period, and the Blades are pressuring Brampton. Nicole Giannino playing some offensive defense, keeping the puck in the Brampton zone. It'll be sent cross ice by LaRa. And now going back to collect it is Claire St. Germain. Jenna McParland is on her. St. Germain leaves it off for DeMaisey. Centering pass there for McParland, but getting a stick on it first was Sadie St. Germain, preventing another shot attempt by the Thunder. Now Tremblay brings it across the Brampton blue line, leaves it off for a Blades player, but instead it will be chipped all the way the length of the ice. Coming out to play is Lacasse. She's harassed by Hannah Horn, and Lacasse will stick it over to her own defenseman. That's Sarah Duncan, who clears his own. Simmons sends the puck back into the Boston zone. First there is Clara St. Germain. Sends it to her sister, Sadie. Sadie looking for Megan Shea. She whiffs, and Simmons will recover the puck at center ice. Sends it back into the Boston zone. Playing behind her own net is Genevieve Lacasse. Getting there is Styles for Brampton. She can't, doesn't have any help, and Duncan will attempt to clear. Does so, but Whitaker will send a shot on net from the blue line, and Lacasse will cover up. A little bit of chaos from the Blades in their own zone, almost maybe feeling the pressure so far of what sort of amounts to a must-win game. Chris, I know we mentioned it the last time the Thunder were here. You hoped to split the series, and you know you just can't get the 
the shots on net, the goals you need to be able to beat this team right now. Fortino sends a shot on net, goes off the body of Jones, and it bounces to the far side corner. Jones sends it around for Styles. now back to Fortino. Fortino looking for Burchard in the center. Burchard's shot goes right on net. It looks like it hit the stick of Jones and bounced just wide. Fortino holds the puck, travels to the zone. Looking for a one-timer with Jess Jones there, but Watchhorn got in the way. Now Retre over to Burchard. Burchard centering pass there and had LeCasse beat, but the shot didn't go on net and it bounces to the far side. Now in the near side. Retre fights for the puck, but coming away with it is Tara Watchhorn. She beats Styles, comes out to the center of the ice. Four on three if the Blades hurry. Winding up is Watchhorn from center ice, puts the shot right on Howe, and she holds her face off. That was a patented watchy bomb there, as she was really just trying to put the puck on the net, and it almost worked as Howe had some trouble seeing it from that far out. I mean, she was about 150 feet away, just maybe a step or two over the red line. She had a couple numbers with her, as you mentioned, Chris. It looked like Farrell was on her left. She had another player on her right. And decided, you know what, we have no shots on net right now. Let's just try and get one on, see what happens. Offensive zone face-off. Puck sent the length of the ice after a face-off in Brampton zone. Chipped high off the glass right at us by Genevieve LaCasse. I don't know if that's a message or something, Steve. What would you say to her? <laughs> I didn't say anything. <laughs> we said nothing but nice things about Jen LaCasse all season long. Now Keefe plays with the puck in her own zone. Kicked away by Duncan over to DeMacy. DeMacy looking to clear the zone, but getting in her way is Vinton McParland, a pair that caused a lot of problems the last game. Now McIntosh looking for a centering pass. Getting in the way is Maggie DeMacy. Vint now falls down with the puck, but sends it back to Edney. Edney shot goes wide of the net, and coming into play is LaRock and McParland. McParland gets there first as she fights for the puck with Kickham. Now McIntosh, centering pass for McParland. Getting a stick on there was DeMazie and Farrell, but instead covering up will be LaCasse, and we'll have a face-off in the Boston zone. And again, it's that bend-but-don't-break defense. You know, they're getting the stick checks at the right time. They're clearing the puck to the outside, but it's always a Brampton player who's right there to pick it up and keep the pressure in the blade zone. Face-off won by Brampton. Whitaker looks for a shot on net, goes off the shin of Ellie Tremblay. Now puck goes high and recovered by Watchorn right in front of her own net, and she will skate it out. Now Tremblay, up to Sadie St. Germain, but getting her feet in the way is Whitaker. Whitaker prevents the offensive breakout. Now Giannino steps in front of St. Germain, brings the puck into the Brampton zone, but King is right there, chips up to Montgomery. Montgomery looking for help. Richards is there to help her, but the puck goes loose to the far side where Richards recovers. Taken by Claire St. Germain. Looks to clear. Almost does so. Simmons attempts to keep it in and does, but now St. Germain will chip it just over the blue line. Up to her sister Sadie as it goes off the stick of Whitaker. Sadie looking to get into the offensive zone. Cannot. Now King will bring it back in. She has Richards with her. King winds fire. Saved by LaCasse as she has a stick got on that puck. It's a little bit of knuckle action, and we'll have another face off in the Boston end. One of the more difficult <laughs> saves so far for Jen LaCasse <laughs> as that one was deflected up. She was already going down in the butterfly before she had to make a quick glove reaction. Put that glove up and uh, glove that one down, keeping this a scoreless game with 11.37 remaining in the first. Face off one by Brampton. Back to Fortino. Fortino looking for Richards. He's breaking for the net. Richards shot saved by LaCasse right along the post. Puck squirts out to Retre. She tries to beat two blades, does so, and the puck will go to Shea. Shea looking for Myers, but instead getting there first is Fortino. Fortino chips it over to Jones, playing D with her, and sends it to Retre. Retre looking for help, slapping her stick down is Demasi, and it caused enough of a distraction that the puck squirts out to Meg Myers. Now Myers brings it across her own blue line, or attempts to, but the referee's skate gets in the way, and now we have a two-on-two. Styles looking for Retre. Retre sticks it on Met and it's saved by LaCasse. Now out to Fortino. Fortino over to Burchard. Burchard looking for a centering pass. Has Styles, but can't, she can't get the shot off. And the puck will go to the near side. Styles has Jones with her. Three blades in to harass her with a fourth coming in into Maisie. Instead, Jones brings it right into the front of the net. And the puck will squirt right behind the net as it hit off the stanchion and will come out to center ice. Three on two for the blades if they hurry, but they are unable to as Brown's shot goes, Brown's pass rather goes to Shea, and Shea can only bat it towards the boards behind the net, and Brampton will recover. Puck squirts out to center ice, recovered by Watchorn. Vint harasses her, a matchup we saw plenty of last game. And now Vint again steps into the 
offensive zone for Brampton. Watchhorn on her. Watchhorn chips the puck over to DeMaisie. Or Duncan, rather. Duncan up to center ice. She has kick him there. Keith can't get a stick on it as the puck comes loose. And it's McParland and Vint bringing it into the Boston zone again. Vint sends a shot wide of the net over to McIntosh. McIntosh skates with it behind her back. Finds McParland. McParland lines for shot. Score! Jenna McParland with the first goal of the game. 1-0 Brampton. And we saw that one coming, especially with the play of Vint and McParland the last game we broadcast. This was almost inevitable when they started buzzing around LaCasse's net. Yeah, and it's only a matter of time before you give one up like that. Between the puck possession, the passing, the moving pieces we saw in the offensive zone by the Thunder. It's only a matter of time before they get one past Jen LaCasse. And that was a beautiful shot, just curling out of the corner and putting it high up and over the blocker hand of Jen LaCasse under the crossbar. one nothing Thunder. Puck loose in the neutral zone, chipped in by Grace Murphy. Her, seeing her first action of the game, but now Whitney Hannah Horn will bring it into the Boston zone. Giving chase is Claire St. Germain. She will get there first. Chips it over to Drew Burns. Not her usual defensive partner. And now Burns and Giannino will attempt to clear the zone. Burns over to St. Germain. Getting in the way is Cation. Now Burns and Cation fight for the puck back behind the net. Burns comes away with it and chips it up to Giannino. Giannino cross ice to Claire St. Germain. She skates it out of the boot the Boston zone, sends it high off the glass back behind the Brampton net where Howe plays it, but getting there first is Giannino. Giannino centering pass, no one home, and it will trickle all the way out to the blue line where Clara St. Germain recovers. She attempts to send it in, but Brampton will send it the length of the ice as they go off for a change. Now Murphy loses a handle on the puck. Clara St. Germain is there to clean up after her, but now Burchard keeps it in. Richard looking for a centering pass, chips it off the back of St. Germain, that's Claire St. Germain, who will clear the puck out to center ice. The active D for the Thunder have been noticeable in this game, something we didn't really see the last time they were here, but rushing the puck up, making those cross ice passes, and giving the forwards outlets has really caused the Blades some problems early on. Retray skates it into the Boston zone, loses a handle. Now Myers will bring it out. If she hurries, she has Shea with her, but Burchard is there first, one of their better defensive players for the Brampton Thunder. She attempts to clear. Can't do so. Shea keeps it in, but the puck goes back to Fortino, who will send it rattling around the boards towards her own player. Duncan, right at the blue line, sets, keeps it in the, the Brampton zone. Brown gives chase, as does Kickham, but Styles will come away with the puck and sends it over to Fortino. Now Retre at center ice. Doesn't have help with her, but just dumps it in and goes off for a change as we approach 7 minutes and 40 seconds left in the first period. 1-0 Brampton Thunder. Now Edney whiffs on a clearing attempt. She is harassed by Farrell and Kickham, but ends up sending the puck over to LaRock along the near side boards. LaRock holds the puck. Sends it back to Edney. Now up to McParland. McParland back to Edney on a cross ice, not back to LaRock rather, on a cross ice pass who sends it up to McIntosh in the Boston zone. Sarah Duncan comes away with it, chips it off the rear boards. McParland and Watchorn fight for it, but coming away with it is Duncan, who will skate it out of Boston's zone. Cross center ice with Duncan. She has Vint to beat and cannot do so, and the puck will squirt back into the Boston zone as McIntosh gives chase. Watchorn gets in her way. Ma McIntosh still gets the shot off and is saved by LaCasse, but McIntosh recovers the puck. Now Whitaker looking for a centering pass, but Parlin can't get her stick on it as Watchorn got in her way, and Watchorn will break it out herself. Watchorn across the Brampton blue line looking for a shot, sends it right on Howe, who makes an easy pad save, and Brampton will recover the puck as Watchorn retreats. Now DeMazy attempts to clear it, but goes off the skate of Montgomery. Watchorn has to come back to take possession. She will send it up to Sadie St. Germain. Again, Sadie St. Germain sends it over to Giannino, goes off the stick of Montgomery. Now Giannino and Montgomery fight along the far side boards, with Montgomery sending it back into her own zone. Puck sent the length of the ice by Brampton, and going back to touch up is DeMazie quickly, and we'll have icing. A bad call there is Brant well, good call, bad move by Brampton. And Tara Watchorn is extremely lucky. She was actually going off for a change when Sarah Duncan turned that puck over and neutral ice, leaving her one-on-one -on -one with McIntosh, and then she decides to rush it up the whole way, get a shot off her on, on herself. So she was out there for an extra two minutes that she did not need to be, and her legs were tired before they got that icing call. Puck rattles off the far side boards, giving chase 
is Richards, but getting there first is LaCasse, and she chips it all the way down into the Brampton zone where Fortino will recover. Hot on her heels is Sadie St. Germain. Now Burchard, cross ice for Fortino as it bangs off the far boards, and Fortino will bring it in. Jones is crashing towards the net, shot, score! as LaCasse went down into the butterfly, but it just beat her outstretched skate, and it's 2 to nothing, Brampton, with 5.44 left in the first. And that's exactly what I was talking about, the very active defense so far for the Thunder, as Fortino <laughs> gathered that puck up by the red line and goes right around Maggie DeMazzi. One move to the backhand, and Jen LaCasse stretches out of the left leg, but can't quite get there as she beats her on the backhand to the far post, 2 nothing. Thunder. Watchhorn plays the puck in her own end. Up to Myers. Myers and Fortino fight for it with Fortino coming away for it. Sent up to Jess Jones, now Retray, who slings the puck into the near side corner. Myers rattles it off the boards over to Watchhorn. Watchhorn playing on her offside, flips it over to Brown, and then Myers. Myers has Brown with her. Centering pass for Brown. Shot. Saved by Howe, who holds on. A great opportunity there for Christina Brown. Best opportunity for Boston all game. But it is smothered by Howe, and we'll have a face-off in Brampton's end. And there's your best scoring chance, like you said, Chris. It starts to tire Watchhorn. Again, I think just getting sick of playing in her own end. Leads the rush up herself. Sends a cross-ice pass on the backhand over to Myers. With a nice one-touch pass to Brown, who gets a wrist shot off. But a good blocker save. No rebound left by Erica Howe. Loose puck in the neutral zone. Giving chase is Duncan over to Brown. Ch dumped back for Duncan as Brown falls down as she cleared the zone. Now Vint goes down as she and Brown get tangled. We're going to have a power play here for the Thunder. Uh, a bit of a rough call there as there's nothing Christina Brown could do. But that is uh, certainly a call that Rebecca, she had to get in Vint's way. Vint just ran her over. I was going to say, not a bad one to take there as, you know, Rebecca Vint, we saw all last weekend when they were here, two weekends ago, excuse me, that she has the speed to go by anyone. She was harassing Tara Watchman all weekend long, and if you don't take her down there, she's one on one with Genevieve LaCasse. We saw her score a couple of goals the last time we were here, so better safe than sorry. Let's, let's test that number two PK for the Blades. That is correct, Steve. Blades have the number two penalty kill in the CWHL. The Brampton Thunder have the number two power play in the CWHL. Shot on goal by Enni, sticked away by LaCasse. Giving chases Vint, she'll send it up to McIntosh. They play catch with it, and Vint will swap places with her as she sends the puck to Enni. Now we're off, looking for a shooting lane. Back to Enni at center ice. Harassed by Kickham, and Enni will send it over to Vint along the near side. McParland robbed by Watchhorn. Watchhorn attempts to clear, but it goes into the chest of McIntosh, and the puck will stay in the Boston zone. Now Watchman recovers, rattles it around the board, but boards, but is recovered by Enni at the point. McIntosh behind the boss net, looking for a centering pass. LaRock is there, going down to scoop it away is Farrell. She gets it as far as the blue line. Shot score by Vint there on, on an odd play. The puck bounced off of McParland's skate over to Vint, who is able to clean it up quickly. And all of a sudden, it's 3-0 Brampton in the first period. And I guess it was just delaying the inevitable. I said Rebecca Vint is a very talented goal scorer when she has the puck under stick around the net. And there's not much else you can do besides take her down in that situation. But she ends up scoring on the power play anyway, just sort of delaying it by about 50 seconds or so as they scored with under a minute into their power play. Face-off one by Brampton brought into the Boston zone. Fighting for it is Hannah Horn, who takes out Tremblay, who's slow to get up. Hannah Horn looking for a centering pass, finds it, but it's chipped wide as now Ellie Tremblay, who's gotten up, gives chase. Tremblay harassed by Cation, sent back to DeMazie, intercepting it is Richards. Richards is smushed between two blades, that's DeMazie and St. Germain, still fighting for it. DeMazie hot on her tail, and it will be chipped over to Giannino, who attempts to clear, but instead the puck goes off the skate of a Brampton player, and Hannah Horn goes to give chase in the near side corner. Still a loose puck in the Boston zone. Sadie St. Germain attempts to clear, held up quick, briefly by Whitaker, who now recovers the puck. Now Whitaker has Cation with her, sends a shot right in on LaCasse, sticked away. Rebound goes right to Jamie Lee Retre, who looks for a shot, fakes it, brings it wraps it around the net, and it's saved by LaCasse. 
Now Tremblay. Attempts to clear, but getting a stick at waist height is Retray to keep the puck in. Tremblay again attempts to clear, and this time does with the help of Sadie St. Germain. Now Burchard in her own zone. Chips it off the far boards into the Boston zone, but Watchorn will recover it first. Sends it over to Claire St. Germain, who can't get it past center ice, as it's again recovered by Brampton. Now St. Germain recovers the puck, tries to chip it into the Brampton zone and does, but it's on the stick of Fortino, who sends it over to Burchard. Burchard and Fortino play catch in the Brampton zone. Up to Jess Jones. Christina Brown's on her, but getting the puck away is Styles. Three on two with Brampton hurries. Fortino with Retray and Styles. Now Burchard up to help. Saved by LaCasse. Rebound sticked away. And the Blades center cover. Clear. They cannot. Jessica Jones attempts to bring it in. Sends it over to Myers. Myers chips it to Watchorn. Now back to Myers, and Myers will skate it into the Brampton zone. Myers has one person to beat in Fortino. Almost does so and is taken out by McParland and we're going to have a power play here for the Blades as Myers was wiped out in the corner by Jenna McParland. And one thing about when the Thunder send their defensemen up into the play like that, it leads to our man rushes the other way and they almost sprung Megan Shea there behind before that puck got picked off, but Meg Myers seems to slip behind the defense, make a rush all the way down to the corner before being taken out, setting up this Blades power play which is good for number three in the CWHL so far in the season. Face off one by Brampton. The Rock attempts to send it out. She gets some help with the clear, and it will rattle all the way back to behind Genevieve Lacasse's net where she leaves it off for Drew Burns. Minute 35 left in the period. Minute 45 left on the power play as Watchorn brings the puck up, sends it over to Brown. Brown attempts to skate for the puck. She has Edney to beat, but Edney gets a the puck to Vint. Vint and Watchorn again match up. But this time the puck squirts to Myers. Myers loses possession and Vint will send it the length of the ice. Lacasse will go back to give chase. Now Burns. Again behind her own net. King in the offensive zone for Brampton, but Burns will chip it over her stick and into the Brampton zone. Immediately cleared by Whitaker, but get getting to it first is Watchorn. Watchorn attempts to get the puck back in. Shea can't keep possession and the puck again rattles the length of the ice. And again the Blades have trouble getting into the offensive zone once that puck gets cleared out by the Thunder. This is the third chance now. Puck into the Brampton zone. Fielding Montgomery chips it out. Watchorn gloves it down and leaves it off for Kickham. Kickham again tries to bring it into the Brampton zone. She'll chip it over to Farrell who rattles it behind the net where it's recovered by Simmons. Simmons hammers it off the near side boards, but Watchar manages to keep it in briefly before being harassed by King. King looking for a short, short-handed opportunity with 17 seconds left, sends it technically on net as Lacasse comes out to stick it down, and with 13 seconds left, the Blades will attempt one more shot for this power play. Five seconds left in the period, puck controlled by Burchard, and that will do it for the first period as Brampton jumps out to a 3-0 lead. Tough first period, you spend a lot of time in your own zone, a lot of time defensively running around. You had the one quality scoring chance there, it seemed, from Christina Brown as she got that little one-touch pass from Meg Myers. But other than that, not much to show offensively for the Blades. And they need to give Genevieve Lacasse some help in net if they want to have a chance to stay in this game. Not a lot of offensive pressure from the Blades. Their opportunities have been few and far between when it comes to the offense. And really, when you look at Rebecca Vint and Jess, uh, Jenna McParland and Jessica Jones, they've been able to impose their will on this uh, Blades team so far this game, which is the exact problem the Blades ran into the last series that we broadcasted, as well as last weekend when they were up in Brampton two weekends ago. It's the same three players. They know who they are, and yet they have not yet been able to stop them. I think the thing that it comes down to is the speed and the passing from those players. I think this Thunder team makes very crisp passes. They move very well without the puck, and it's very hard to defend that. I mean, you're trying to cover everybody, but when you're as short-staffed as this Blaze team is, you roll out Tara Watchorn for more than half of the game. Drew Burns logs a lot of minutes. You rely on that top line so much for your offense, so much for your defense. It's hard to stay with these teams that can keep rolling three, even four lines for a full game. It's just 
It's just and not very easy to do. And when you look at the quality of Brampton's quote-unquote fourth line, it's Tara Cation and Whitney Hannahorn who both played huge roles in their other games. Not only that, they are capable of working on other lines, and we've seen that throughout the game. We're joined now by Blades captain Tara Watchorn. And Tara, can you hear us? Tara, can you hear us? Now I can, yeah. Great. Right. Tara, rough first period, down by three goals. What do you say in the locker room at this moment with the momentum having gone towards Brampton so far up until that power play? I think that um, we had the weekend off last week, so we really just need to get our legs going and um, get everyone rolling. They were in Calgary last week, and so I think if we can get going and keep it. All the shifts going to the end of the game. I think we can generate some good opportunities. Now, Tara, what can you do offensively to sort of get, you know, the momentum going? You had a couple shots there in the first. I think the total was three. What's one way to generate more pressure against this team that you've had some scoring success against? I think it's all going to start with getting the puck in deep and generating the simple chances. I think from there, we're either going to generate some power play opportunities or um, get, getting some dirty goals. All right, thank you so much for joining us, Tara. Really appreciate the time. Thank you. That was Blades captain Tara Watchhorn, who has played a large number of minutes for this Blades team. Uh, as we turn down the mic before it picks up something that it really shouldn't, uh, especially after a, a first period where the Blades are down by three. Um, but she, she's right. They have had the weekend off. They had in used that weekend to eat a lot of turkey and stuffing. Uh, not that that's an excuse, but it sounds good, real, really good in a story. And now the Blades have to get their legs about them. They've had two practices since the, since really their last series up in Brampton. They didn't practice during Thanksgiving week. And it is going to take them some time to get their legs under them. With that said, they know this opponent. They know this opponent well a little bit disappointing to see that lack of offensive pressure so far. And you could tell they came out a little slow. I mentioned it early in the broadcast that, you know, they just seemed a little congested, a little confused coming out of their own zone. They weren't making crisp passes like we've seen. They weren't really skating their lanes, filling their lanes. They were a step slow here and there. The pass was behind them. It just wasn't cohesive like we've seen from this team in the past. They need to get that, that energy going, that teamwork going, and be able to you know, connect on some of these passes, get the puck in deep like Captain Watchorn said there, and get pucks to the net. That's really how they score their goals. Nothing's been overly pretty from this team so far, so pucks to the net, extra chances, rebounds, whatever you can do to get on the board and get back into this game. With that, we will send it to a break. Join us again at 9.05. That's 9.05 if you're going to go make yourself a snack at home after the first period of play. Boston Blade 0, Brampton Thunder 3 from New England Sports Center. When I was seven, I wore these gloves. They held this stick. Well, these skates carried me over the blue line. We won the championship. And now, it's all yours. Cool. Oh, <laughs> and this mouth guard. I'll get my own. Thanks. <laughs> the fifth season is when spirit for the game gets passed down. That's why we're proud to support over 5,000 teams. 100% hey. drive. 100% passion. 100% effort. But women in sports get only 5% of the attention. Hey! Canada's dairy farmers believe women in sports should be seen and heard loud and clear. With fueling women's champions, we're shining a light on women athletes at every level. Hey! Join us. Hashtag champion her. You do know that there's only four seasons, right? 
Then how do you explain the way kids wish away the summer because we can't wait to play in the fall? Or how teammates often become best mates? Or how families happily vacation in Winnipeg in January because that's where the tournament is? So you see, Miss Woods, there is a fifth season and it's the best season in Canada. So you're talking about hockey? Oh, it's more than just talking, Miss Woods. Scotiabank is proud to support over 5,000 teams in Canada's fifth season. Off the draw, Brampton, The Rock. Over to McParland. Good touch pass to Richards. And here comes Brampton with some speed. Richards tees it up. Big rebound, and they cash it in. Well, LaCasse made a good first save, but no chance on the second one. And the Brampton Thunder go up 1 0 on a goal from Sarah Eden. LaCasse gives up a rebound just a little bit too big there. And Edney right on her doorstep. Makes no mistake depositing that one into the back of the goal. Grace Murphy, she's separated from the puck that time. There's a shot from Jess Jones and she puts it in the back of the net. Jess Jones, no mistake. Her seventh of the season, it's 2-0 Brampton. Impressive start to the year for Jess Jones. That's her seventh goal, tenth point now, and just the her eighth game of the season. She's looked fantastic, and that was another nice shot. That uh, looked like there was a player in front of uh, LaCasse there. Long stretch pass, right to Patton. Patton in all alone, makes the move, drops it off. And that shot blocked. That's one where you've got to be selfish. If you're Patton, you take that shot. A significant one for Boston. Could get even harder. As Vint scores a beauty. Oh, what a highlight goal. Takes the puck from the sidewall, makes the move, and then elevates the backhand up and over the cast. That'll make it 3 nothing with just 3.24 left. Let's have another look at this beauty. Wow, and that'll just about do it here for Boston. Down by three late in the game. Hey. 100% énergie. Hey. 100% passion. 100% effort. Pourtant, les femmes n'ont que 5% de visibilité. Les producteurs laitiers canadiens croient que les athlètes féminines devraient être vues et entendues haut et fort. Avec Nourrir la passion du sport féminin, nous célébrons les athlètes féminines de tous les niveaux. Joignez-nous à vivre le sport féminin. Here's Julie Chu at the left point. Pebete. Cross and scores! Wow, what an opportunity. You knew that that was coming. I definitely lost the first goal pool. My money was on Toronto's Vela scoring the first one, but it looks like it's Anne-Sophie Bete. We've got a girl by the name of Anne-Sophie standing right next to us, and she's cheering quite loudly with that one-timer that just beat Kessler. The, she had no chance on that one. Just a few moments before, you thought that they were going to score when Lorian Rougeau just had the puck sort of bobble on her stick, but there they go. one nothing, Canadienne over the Toronto Furies. Poulain will take the face off here. Shoots it, hits the crossbar, scores! They're saying it actually came under the bar as she won the face off, stepped into the drive, and put it just under the crossbar. 2 0, Canadian. Yeah, that definitely looked like a goal to me, John. It went top cheese and out. Mary Philippe Poulain picks up her league leading eighth goal of the season. Absolutely unreal. You know, you knew that she was going to come into this league and that she would find a way to dominate in the CWHL, but she has exceeded expectations, scoring her eighth goal in just her fifth game of the season. Man, that was, that was brutal. Here's Willette in the slot with a shot. Goes over, double goal. Goal to her and in. Willette's wrist shot hit Kessler in the shoulder and maybe the mask. In fact, it was the mask. It looked like it caught her up, uh, up in the shoulder and hit the mask and then went over her and into the net. Free of charge. 45 seconds left in the hockey game. Here's Chevery in front. They score! Had a backhander in behind Levante. It was, I believe, number 23. No, it was 27, excuse me. 
Crevo who breaks the goose egg. And I'm going to hear it from my broadcast partner for mentioning that a about eight minutes ago when Toronto still had yet to get a shot on goal. So Toronto is on the board. It is three to nothing Brampton over the Boston Blades or about three minutes before the teams take the ice for the second. Steve, we talked about the, the issues that this team's had so far this game slash this series against Brampton. This is the make or break period, really. And it's really sort of a, an overall bigger picture of their entire season. They're giving up way too many chances. They're not generating enough offense on their own and they're leaving Genevieve Lacasse high and dry. The shots right now are 22 to four officially after the first period and they've dug themselves a three nothing hole already. The Thunder have almost as many goals as the Blades have shots on net thus far and they're really pinned in their own zone for 12, 13, 14 minutes of that entire first period. The rest mostly being neutral zone with mostly one and done chances in the offensive zone. They need to find a way to sustain more chances more pressure in the offensive zone. Get the puck in deep, like Washhorn said after the end of that first period. Get the puck in deep, get pucks to the net, get second chance opportunities. That's how they get back into this game. Part of the issue is making it into the offensive zone. They haven't really been able to take that blue line, possess the puck past the blue line. Brampton's playing suffocating defense when it comes to their own defensive zone. Teams are switching sides this uh, this period. We're going to have a better, clearer shot of it from our vantage point. But really, the Blades need to not just get the puck to the net. They need to get some quality time in the Brampton end in order to be able to develop those chances. Of those shots on net, two of them were Tara Watchhorn. One was from center ice. The other was from the blue line. That's not, I mean, yes, that is how the Blades have scored a lot of their uglier goals, but that's really not a high average shot. I think the way the Blades needed to generate their offensive chances, and we saw it a couple times in the first period, was the Thunder defense really liked to join that rush. They're fast, they're skilled. They want part of the offensive action, especially against this Blade team that gives up a lot of goals, despite Genevieve Lucas being all-worldly. So I think if they can counter that, a no, you know, a good stand-up poke check and spring them on a two-on-one rush, a three-on-two rush back the other way, that will be your best chance to counter punch one of those rushes and go back in on your own rush of your own. Hopefully you get an on-man situation and you have a better chance to score instead of, you know, trying to go down three on three against a very highly skilled defensive core for the Thunder and very talented forwards who are very defensively sound like Rebecca Vin. Part of the issue is that Blade, the Blades have two real defensive pairings with Claire St. Germain flexing between the two to give breaks to Drew Burns, to Sarah Duncan, to Tara Watchhorn even. They have to match up against Brampton's top two lines, and then Brampton rolls their third line against a depleted team. So Retray, Styles, and Jones for Brampton, and then McParland, Vint, and McIntosh, the real trouble line for this Blades team, go one-on-one -on -one with their number one and number two defensive pairings. Then the third pair has, it has the, not the third pair for the Blades, but that cobbled together pair, the not normal partners, go up against that third solid line, a very good line for the Brampton Thunder. It's going to be interesting to see what the matchups are to help out this Boston team because they're going to have to play the matchups in order to successfully break past this Boston, this Brampton defense. You know, I'd like to see a little bit more of the third line for Boston tonight. Ellie Tremblay, Nicole Giannino, and Sadie St. Germain. That line has some offensive talent. They have a lot of firepower there with Ellie Tremblay, especially down the middle, having two goals, leading the Blades team, or tied for the team lead in goals. They have some creativity on that line. We've seen Ellie Tremblay score against this team last weekend. If she can find some space on one of those two-on-one counters, it could be a good opportunity for the Blades to get on the board here and get back into this game. Meanwhile, we already have a change as Myers, Brown, and Kickham will start off this second period for Boston as we take the action down to the ice for the second period. And this is the top line that we're used to seeing for the Blades. Face off one by Boston. It will be played back in their own defensive zone by Tara Watchhorn. She skates it in front of her net. Mal crosses the blue line, sends it up to Burns. Burns taps it past the Brampton blue line, giving chases Meg Myers. 
Myers won't get to it first as LaRock does, and they fight for it behind the Brampton net. Holding the puck is a Blades player. That's Brown. She and Richards fight for it. Coming away with it is Myers, and she sends it over to the corner where Pickham and Whitney Hannah Horn fight for it. Now Burns keeps the puck in the Brampton zone. Attempting a shot is Brown, but it goes off the stick of LaRock. Now Burns in the center of the ice, chips it towards the net. Shot by Myers goes off the post and off the glass, and it'll be recovered by Myers and Brown in the corner. Now Myers looking for Burns. Burns can't hold on to the puck as Montgomery gets her stick on it. Hannah Horn gives chase, but Watchorn will get it first. Watchorn scores the puck out to the center ice, but LaRock will bring the puck into Boston zone. LaRock looking for a centering pass. Whitney Hannah Horn is there, but instead she will send it to Burchard. Burchard over to Jones. Jones attempts a shot, but it goes off the hand of Meg Myers, and Boston will attempt to clear the zone and do so. And that was just the first shift that the Blades needed here as they got the puck in deep. You got the cycle going and a couple good shots on net. And that last one just went wide, I believe. It was Meg, Meg Myers on the far side who sent it just wide of the post. Puck now in the Boston zone, fighting for it over Trey and Duncan. The puck will score it out to center ice and we'll have a stoppage of play. It looked like it hit an overhang stick there off of the Thunder bench. But a great job by this Blaze team, you know, trying to keep things simple. As as the second period started off, you heard the captain talk about it in, in between the periods. And so far, we've seen a little bit more of that to start this period. Megan Shea recovers the puck in her own zone after the faceoff is won by Boston, attempting to keep it in as Simmons, and she does so. But Duncan will get to it behind her own net first. Fighting for it along the far side are two blades and two thunder, and Rebecca Vint will get the puck and send it right on LaCasse, who gloves it down for a faceoff. And it looks like Megan Shea will just swap back to where Aaron Kickham was. She started the game on the second line, Shea on the first, but Shea is now on that line with Olivia Keith and Rachel Farrell for the blades. Faceoff one by Brampton. Retray sends a shot in and bounces off the near side boards, attempting to keep it in is McIntosh. She does so. Centering pass there is recovered by Farrell. Chips it back to Duncan. Duncan over to DeMacy. DeMacy over to center ice. Offsides would have been called there, and Brampton wisely let the Blades touch the puck first. Simmons attempts to send it in, sends it off her own player, McIntosh, brings in herself. Puck squirts out to neutral ice. Shea attempts to recover, but Whitaker will send it back into Boston zone, and it will be Olivia Keith who have to, has to skate it out. Now Keith. Looking to beat Simmons. Simmons brings her down to the ice and falls down after. No call. And the puck will be kept in the Brampton zone as Watchorn sends a shot on Howe. Sticked away by Howe. Whitaker recovers behind her own net. Over to Simmons. Simmons, the dangerous pass to Richards, who manages to get it over to McIntosh before the Blades can get there. And now Tremblay will send it over to Watchorn. Watchorn skates across the blue line. She has Giannino with her. Watchorn playing forward. She has... Sadie St. Germain and Giannino. Giannino now takes the puck in the corner. Looking back for Watchorn at the point. Watchorn gives it, sends it cross ice to Tremblay. Tremblay with a centering pass. Shot safe. Rebound. Goes back behind the net as Claire, as Sadie St. Germain rather brings the puck back to Watchorn who barely keeps it in at the blue line. Puck recovered by Simmons. Going in to get it is Sadie St. Germain. She sends it back to Giannino. Giannino's shot goes off the back of Simmons and it will be recovered behind the Brampton net by Whitaker. Whitaker can't clear as Claire St. Germain gets her stick in the way. Loose puck along the far side. Fighting for it are two blades and two thunder. Coming away with it is Claire St. Germain. She shovels it over to Burns. Burns fresh on the ice looking for a centering pass. She has Tremblay, Giannino, Myers, and Brown on the ice and instead will just send it towards the net where Hal covers it up. And another great shift by the Blades as they continue to sort of mix and match lines here to start the second period, trying to get anything going offensively. Another good shift, getting the puck in deep, cycling it around, and getting a couple of good shots on net. Nicole Giannino had it, having one from the low, low right circle that got blocked down by the glove hand of Erica Howe. Face off one by the Blades. Byrne sends it up to kick him. Now Brown loses possession of the puck, and it's shipped into the netting by Edney, and we'll have another face-off in the Br Brampton zone. And, you know, we see a lot of these shots coming from the Blades from the point, 
But the problem is no one's in front of the net for rebounds, for tips, for screens. So some of these easier shots like Tara watch one just wound up for a slap shot. No one's there to clean up the garbage. Latrey skates it out of the Brampton zone. She's looking for help, finds Jones. Jones with a shot saved by Lacasse on a good opportunity there for Brampton, but another nice save by Genevieve Lacasse. And the Blades, once again, relying on their all-world goaltender, Genevieve Lacasse, <laughs> to come up big on the save, as it was a great cross ice pass there by Jess Jones. Brampton wins the faceoff in Boston zone. Latrey attempts a slick pass behind her back, but Boston is able to recover. They send it out to neutral zone. Edney gets a stick on it, and that's going to count as a touch-up. And it appears we have a power play coming up as Styles goes off for the Thunder, so the Blades will be on the power play. Styles going off for a body check as, you know, the Blades are getting their second chance on the power play here. A good chance to get on the board, get the offensive going with a five-on-four opportunity, and you put the captain, Tara Watchorn, back out there. Face off one by Brown. Back to Watchorn. Watchorn looks for a shot, but getting in her way is McParland, so she sends it to Myers. Myers over to Brown. Brown centering pass shot. Saved by Kick. Kick him with the shot there, but kicked away by Howe. Still fighting for it in the corner. Now Burns. Burns can't keep it in the zone. It'll be recovered by Myers. Myers over to Watchorn. Watchorn looks for a centering pass to kick him. Kick him can't get it into the Brampton zone. It holds it on the blue line for Watchorn to come get. Now Watchorn, looking again for sending pass, it goes to Rebecca Vint. Vint is all alone, Watchorn gets back, Vint winds, fires, and goes right into the netting. A good break, <laughs> a lucky break for the Blades there as they were able to prevent Rebecca Vint from scoring on the breakaway. Watchorn hustling to get back and to break down the angle so she was unable to score. Yeah, and she better have hustled because that was her bad pass that led to that chance for Rebecca Vint put it right on her tape as she split the defenders to go in on her own before it was shrugged off by Genevieve Lacasse, but a couple good chances there to start off the power play for the Blades. Minute 20 left in the power play for the Blades as Brampton looks for a wraparound shot. That is Richard. She is harassed by Tremblay, who pushes her into the boards. No call, and the puck will squirt out. No, not to center ice, as Richards is able to keep it in. Now Keith sends it over to Shea. Shea brings it in the neutral zone, chips it into Brampton's zone, and giving chase is Keith and Farrell, but it will be an icing call as Keith was just over, or rather, Shea was just over the line. So that's two lines, that's icing, and the faceoff will be back in Boston zone. So with a minute and one second left on the power play, Boston again has a defensive zone faceoff. Yeah, once again, they're having trouble getting back into the zone and regrouping once the Thunder clear it out. So that's something to look for for the Blades, see if they can get set back up on the power play. Fighting for the puck in the corner is Keith and Richards. Going down are both, and we're going to have a call that was out of our viewpoint, but there will be a penalty coming up, and I believe it is on Brampton, so we have a five-on-three coming. And it looks like it's Richards who's going off for another body check. It's going to be a five-on-three, like you said, Chris, for 49 seconds, and we saw these two teams get a little bit chippy the last time Brampton was down here playing the Blades. Let's see what they have for the five-on-three, see if they can get something on net, and get some second chance opportunities. Top line out there for Boston in the five on three. 45 seconds left of five on three action. Brown with the puck, looks for Myers. Myers rattles it around the board. Watchorn has to give chase and cannot keep it in the offensive zone as it squirts just over the blue line. Now Burns holds the puck, sends it cross ice to Watchorn who will bring it in. The blades reset. Watchhorn and Vint match up, but the puck goes over to Burns. Burns back to Watchhorn. Watchhorn fakes a shot, goes over to Kickham. Kick him, looking for a centering pass. Burns is there, sends to Watchorn instead. Watchorn winds, fire, saved by Howe. Puck squirts out to the near side. 15 seconds left of five on three action. Watchorn plays catch with Burns. Burns looks for a centering pass. Shot, score! Christina Brown with her second goal of the season. And that will be the first goal of the game for the Blades. It's now three to one on a five on three power play goal. Best part is the Blades still have a power play. And so far, they've done a great job this period of getting pucks in the net, getting second chance opportunities. They've had three, four, five shots, it seems. After that first shot gets to Eric Allen, she's doing a good job of stopping the first one. It's the second and third chances that the Blades are really making their money on right now and doing a good job of getting back into this game, stealing a little bit of momentum back with the power play. 
Still on the power play are the Blades. Ellie Tremblay brings it across center ice and chips it into the Brampton zone. Howe is out to play it, but giving chase is Shea. Shea can't get there first, but does harass Brampton enough, and Tremblay gets a skate out, keep it in the zone. But now Retray attempts a breakaway, and going down to a knee to poke check it away is Rachel Farrell on a beautiful play. And Brampton will now recoup in their own end with 51 seconds left on the penalty kill for the Thunder. Tremblay sends the puck up to Shea. Shea taps it into the Brampton zone. Back to get it is Whitaker of the Thunder. Whitaker skates it behind her own net and skies it into the Boston bench where it hits off the back of Drew Burns who laughs it, laughs it off. And we'll have an offensive zone face off for the Blades. 39 seconds to go on the power play for the Blades. They've already got one on this extended five on three. It's now five on four. But if they can get another one on the board here, Chris, to make it a one goal game, anything can really happen as they seem to have stolen the momentum with that last goal by Christina Brown. Face off one by Boston. Kickham looks for a centering pass. Holds, skates with the puck, sends it cross ice to Watchhorn. Through traffic, Watchhorn. Attempts to get away from King, is unable to, but holds the puck, leaves it off for Myers. Myers, back to Watchhorn. Watchhorn winds, fires, shot, save, as it just goes to the wide of the net. Brown gets back to recover the puck. Now Myers, over to Watchhorn. Watchhorn looking for a shooting lane, can't find one. Over to Myers again. Myers sends it back off the rear boards, the end boards, and now Burns will cover it along the far side corner. Puck squirts out of the Brampton zone. Watchhorn back to get it. King pressuring her. Penalty has expired, and we're back to even strength action. 3-1. to one. Brampton has the lead with 12 minutes left in the second period. Now Brown with Meyer, has Myers with her. Puts a shot on how he kicks it away, and the puck will squirt to the far side. Fighting forward in the corner is Myers. Myers over to Duncan. Duncan attempts a shot, but it goes right into McIntosh. Now McIntosh and Duncan fight for it. Duncan comes away with a first to prevent a breakaway, and the puck will go to the far side boards in the Boston zone. Now Brown, harassed by two Thunder players, but instead chips the puck over to Giannino, who holds the puck and then chips it off the boards at center ice, attempt to clear. Bring it back in is Edney for the Thunder. Edney, looking for the centering pass, gets it to McParland, and McParland can't get a shot off, and now back comes back the other way. That's Claire St. Germain. Has Giannino with her and said she shovels it on net and it goes just wide. Edney off the far side boards. Puck goes out to Tremblay playing defense with the Maisie. And the Maisie will tap it into the Brampton zone where Vint gives chase. Vint rattles it around the boards. Leaving off for Jones. Jones to Retray. Jones just on the ice. Retray with a shot that just goes wide of the Boston net. And we have end-to-end -end action as Brampton and Boston now fight for it in the Boston zone. Centering pass there from Jones, but Styles can't get a stick on it. And back the other way it goes with Shea chipping it in the Brampton zone. She gives chase of her own puck as the blades go off for a change. Tremblay comes in to help. She takes the puck away, or no, she doesn't take the puck away from Simmons as the puck will go all the way back to the Boston blue line. And DeMaisie will go off as she sends it in the Brampton zone. Now Keith. She fights for it with Simmons in the corner, but Styles will come away with it. Styles rattles it off the boards, giving chase is Jones. Jones taps it out to center ice on a high pass to Retray, but she can't keep possession in the Boston zone. Now LaRock sends it back into Boston zone as Brampton goes off for a change, and LaCasse will settle it behind her own net. Watchhorn sends the puck across center ice, but going back to get it is Fortino. Fortino up to Montgomery. Montgomery had King with her, but was unable to complete the pass, and we'll have an offsides on Brampton as we had some very quick action, at least from my wheezing perspective, uh, for the last four minutes as we're just under ten minutes to go in the second period. Yeah, and a couple good chances for the Blades, as you mentioned, Chris. And with the shuffling of lines, it looks like Claire St. Germain will be centering now as they move Ellie Chomblay back to defense. And it was Claire St. Germain who shoveled that one wide, as you mentioned, looking for a rebound opportunity off the far post. Burns controls the puck in her own zone, sends it over to DeMaisie. DeMaisie stick handles it past King, sent, leaves it off for Myers. Myers' shot gets sticked away, and now back the other way comes Brampton. Brampton can't keep possession in the Boston zone. DeMaisie attempts to clear, can't as Fortino gets her stick in the way. Fortino looks for a centering pass to King. King shovels it on net, but it goes off the skate of Myers and bounces out. Now Burchard 
at the point. Myers falls down twice in an attempt to block. Richard's shot, a howler goes right into the chest of Lacasse, and she makes the save as we now look back up at the clock, and the clock didn't start. And you mentioned the Blades are trying to do a better job of counter, and Meg Myers thought she was going to chip that one out. Burchard was right there, walked the blue line, and was able to get a nice slap shot off that hit her right in the chest, right on the Blades logo of Genevieve Lacasse's sweater there. Ties up another one of her great saves so far in the night. Stop in play as they figure out the clock issue that we mentioned. And Brampton resettles their lines. We still do not have an accurate clock, but they drop the puck anyway. Face off one by Brampton. McParlin sends the puck all the way cross ice for McIntosh, but instead it bounces off the boards. And Ellie Tremblay takes out Tara Watchorn and loses possession of the puck at the same time. Now Rebecca Vint has three blades to beat, but will have a stoppage of play instead. It looks like we're going to get a penalty call here. On it looks like Ellie Tremblay is going to the box for I believe was a tripping call. It's down in that corner. It's a hooking call or body check. Excuse me. I'm sorry. As the referee <laughs> just signals body check. We saw three different <laughs> things apparently. Could have been we a trip, a hook, things, two different calls. Could have been a trip, a hook, a body check. Live, bro way, live broadcasting, ladies and gentlemen. Either way, she's going to the box and she will sit there for two minutes as the Blades try and kill this one off and keep it just a two goal contest. Brampton controls the puck in the Boston zone. Vint leaves it off for McIntosh. McIntosh to LaRock, who sends it back to McIntosh. Now Edney holds the puck, leaves it off for McParland. Back to Edney. Now back to McParland as the Thunder rotate. McParland looking for a shot, sends it high over the net, and it will bounce off the glass, keeping it in the zone. Or no, as Brown manages to wrestle LaRock <laughs> out of the way, and we'll have another stoppage of play as... Uh, looks like we're going to get a call for a hand pass. And the Blades have already surrendered one power play goal on the lone opportunity thus far for the Thunder. So they look to do a better job of tightening up that number two penalty kill, as we mentioned, in the CWHL. And do a good job of keeping this game close as they try and work their way back into this one. Burchard controls the puck in the Brampton zone. Sends it over to Fortino. Fortino up to Retray. Retray has Jones with her, looking for a centering pass. Can't get, gets the pass off, but Jones wasn't there. They had a wide open net and just missed. Now Fortino, back to Burchard. Burchard rotates, fires, and a nice glove save there by Lacasse on another howling shot. And we'll have another face off in the Boston end. And Steve, I know we mentioned this during our first broadcast uh, against the Thunder with Blades and Thunder. Burchard has a shot that can match Tara Watchhorns. It is a heavy, heavy shot. And so far, she's wound up twice, and each time Lacasse is able to, has been able to make that save. I was going to say, but the bad thing for Burchard is that Genevieve Lacasse sees that every day in practice. She's ready for her coming that speed. Grantham controls the puck in the Boston end. Retray swaps with Jones and sends the puck over to Burchard. Now Burchard over to Fortino. 40 seconds left in the penalty kill for the Blades. As controlling the puck behind the net is Jones. Now Burchard. Back to Fortino. Fortino over to Retray, looking for a clear shooting lane. Can't find one, and she will retreat, sending the puck over to Burchard. Now Fortino to Jones. Jones attempts another pass, and getting her stick in the way is DeMazie, and it'll be a loose puck along the near side boards, as coming away with it is Fortino, who sends it back to Burchard. Burchard rotates again. Over to Fortino. Fortino leaves it off to Jones. Jones looks for the centering pass. Can't find it. Instead, sends it behind the net. And now Fortino looks for Retray. Can't get a shot off as one second left, and now the penalty expires as Retray falls down. No call, and Keefe will bring it across the Brampton blue line. She's taken down by Fortino. Things have gotten very chippy here as now Hannah Horn brings the puck into the Boston zone. She attempts a shot, getting in her way is Watchhorn, and the loose puck squirts along the near side. Hannah Horn sends a shot on Lacasse. It looked like it was going behind the net, but it gets on Lacasse's pad, and Giannino will clear it for Boston. Now Claire St. Germain at her own blue line. Sends it right on net. Stick by Howe, and she'll cover up on a very bizarre minute of play there as the puck kind of just rattled around both ends. 
it, 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 just an interesting play, I guess. It's, it, it just it seemed like odd. no one could get a handle on it. No one wanted to join the offensive rush. No one wanted to be on offense, it seemed, as they just sort of batted it around in neutral zone before Claire St. Germain sent that puck rolling in on net. Brampton sends the puck into the neutral zone where it's recovered by Sadie St. Germain. She sends it in for Giannino, but Giannino is two steps over the line and the Blades will be offside. And this new third line seems to have a little bit of jump to them. The St. Germain sandwich, as I will call them. Nicole Giannino with the sisters, Clara and Sadie. We've seen them move Clara up to play center before last time the Thunder were down here. That was because of a shorthanded situation. Now it almost seems because of a necessity. Necessity, yes, and familiarity with her sister, but she loses the face off there, and Jenna McParlin just wound up and shot a rocket on LaCasse, who pad padded it away. It'll be recovered in the Boston zone by Duncan. Duncan attempts to clear and does so, but by doing so, she sticked it right into the shirt of Vint, who skates it into her own zone and leaves it off for McParland after Edney got a stick on it. McParland tries to beat two blades at once, can't do so, falls down, and Duncan will recover the puck in the Boston zone. Duncan passes to herself, but Claire St. Germain comes back to help. She attempts to clear. Edney uh, dives to keep it in, but the puck squirts over the line. Now Edney again gets a stick on it, brings it back into the Boston zone, skates it back behind the Boston net, or rather sends a bouncing shot on net. It looked again like it was going back behind the net, but the shot bounced to LaCasse, who wisely covered it up. You know, it looks like Boston's trying to activate their defense a little bit more into the rush, be a little bit more aggressive, something we've seen Brampton do all night and all weekend long, as this is the fifth time they've played each other out of the last five games for the Blades. Now Fortino attempts a shot that goes off the skate of Myers, and we have a three-on-two coming the other way if the Blades hurry. Tremblay skates with the puck, but gives enough time for the Brampton defense to reset, and Burchard will get to the puck first in the Brampton zone. Now Retre, looking for a home run pass to Jones, but instead Tremblay gets a stick on it, sends it into the far corner, or the near corner of the Boston zone, rather. It's just far from our perspective, and the puck shoots out to Burchard, who sends a... Oh, Frisbee pass wide of the Boston net. Now Jones over to Fortino. Skates with the puck. Sends it over to Burchard. Burchard holds back to Fortino. Fortino's shot again goes into Meg Myers. And poor Meg Myers has seen a lot of Fortino's shots go off of various legs, arms, and her chest so far. Now Tremblay able to clear the zone. Three on two for Boston if they hurry. Kick him. Sends a uh, soft shot on net. Howe sticks it away. Kept in by Watchorn. Watchorn attempts a shot. Now we have a breakaway for Retre, who falls down, giving Watchorn just enough time to get back as Retre wipes herself out. And now Watchorn will bring the puck back into the Brampton zone as it goes off fielding Montgomery's stick. Now Fortino leaves off to Burchard, who sends a long pass that hits off the chest of Richards. Getting to it first is Shea. Shea sends it off the far boards into the Brampton zone, but now Burchard will skate it out. Burchard has Montgomery with her and leaves it off for her. Getting a stick in there is Burns. And now the puck comes towards the Brampton zone. But Farrell will be dispossessed at center ice. Loose puck in the neutral zone. Sent in by Watchorn. Controlling is Burchard, who nearly falls down with Shea on her tail. But she sends it over to Fortino, who then sends it to Montgomery in the center of the ice. Now over to Burns. Burns sends it right into the chest of... Richards, and the puck will bounce back into the Brampton zone where Fortino settles it. And this period has been a lot freer and looser in terms of structure in their own zone. Now King has the puck in the center of the ice. Can't get a shot off due to Duncan's defense. Simmons winds and fires, and the puck goes off the stick of LaCasse and off the glass. Puck now behind the Boston net. Duncan gets to it. Back hands it towards Farrell, but getting in the way is McIntosh. McIntosh attempts to bring it back in, but Duncan will get the puck again. Now Shea chips it over Simmons and into the Brampton zone where Riddicker gets a stick on it, sends it off the boards where Duncan recovers. Now St. Germain in the Boston zone, leaves it off, but McIntosh gets there first. She has McParlin with her. McIntosh has two blades to beat, can't do it, sends a centering pass that goes through the legs of Vint and instead goes to the far boards. Attempting to keep it in as Whitaker, she does off the skate of Giannino. And the puck will be rattled back behind the net. Whiffing is Vint. And St. Germain attempts to clear. She cannot. That's Clara St. Germain. 
Two minutes and 50 seconds left in the second period as a centering pass from McIntosh goes wide and will be recovered by Brampton in their own zone. Now Vint winds, fires, padded away aggressively, a punch away by Lacasse, kept in by LaRock who p sends it on net it, and Lacasse settles it with her pad and covers up. And to finish that thought that I started before, we had another back and forth rush by the Thunder mostly, but this pair has been very free and loose. We've seen the changes that the Blades have made to their lines, trying to get a little bit more offense, trying to see something that works. But we're seeing the defense jump up a lot more, a lot of back and forth chances, these long home run passes that seem to be connecting. And it's like the Wild West out there, lots of chances for both sides. Lock shot goes off the pads of Lacasse. Rebound goes into the near boards. That's a close opportunity there. Watchorn gets a stick on it, sends it up to Myers in the neutral zone. Myers leaves it off for Brown. Brown, Myers, and kick them all out there, and the puck squirts into the Brampton zone, but LaRock is first there. She sends it over to Edney, chips it off the boards for Jones. Jones sends it into the Boston zone. Lacasse out of her net to play it. Retray is back in on the tail of Watchorn, but Watchorn gets to the puck first. Now Myers, up to Brown. LaRock sends it back in. Checked into the boards is Brown by LaRock, and we'll have a stoppage of play as the puck settled underneath her. Brown is in some discomfort on the ice as she gets up slowly, and we'll have a face-off in the neutral zone. Yeah, she seemed to have gotten stood up. I don't know if it was accidental or if she ran into the boards there. But it seemed like she had met, she was met with some resistance there in neutral ice before falling over and just laying on top of the puck, getting herself the whistle. Face off at center ice. Burns sends it over to Keith. Keith looking for Shea. Shea sends it into the Brampton zone. How out of her net to play it. Farrell comes in and almost gets a stick on the puck, but Fortino's back there first. Now Duncan at center ice, attempts to chip it in the zone, but cannot, and now Richards will bring it in for Brampton. Richards falls down to the ice, Duncan pressuring her, and Farrell will now give chase on the puck, but Portino gets the pass from Richards. Now Richards, dispossessed by Keith. She has Farrell with her, but chooses to send it on net from the blue line, and how delays to cover it up with a minute and 10, 11 seconds left in the second period. I'm not sure if Olivia Keith was towards the end of her shift there or didn't even realize that it was a two-on-one, but, you know, not a terrible play to shoot that on net, get the offensive zone face off with just a minute 11 remaining here. Face off one by Brampton, but Vince Stick deflects, uh, or rather St. Germain sends a shot towards the net off the stick of Vint, and it's quickly covered up by Howe, and we'll do it again. And Claire St. Germain, not a center by trade, but she's learning on the fly here. Maybe that was an attempted shot on net. Who knows? Who knows? Whitaker rattles it around the boards. Now Vint gets her stick on it, backhands it over to McIntosh, who brings it into the Boston zone. Tremblay on her. McIntosh leaves it off for Sim. She takes it across. And we will have a face-off in the neutral zone with 53 seconds left in the second. From our vantage point, it looked like Simmons made a great reach with the stick, one hand on the top of it to keep that one in the zone. Face-off one by Vint. She can't control as Giannino sends it cross ice to watch her. On her is Vint. Now McParland gets a stick on the puck, going down as St. Germain. Claire St. Germain, but... Watch her and bring the puck in. Now St. Germain joins the rush. Sends it off the skate of Vint. And the puck comes to the near side. 30 seconds left in the second period. Two blades, two thunder fighting for it in the corner. And they are fighting for it. A lot of pushing, a lot of shoving. Whitaker comes away with the puck back behind the Brampton net. She will frisbee it off, out past center ice. Now McIntosh gives chase, but Lacasse will send the puck to Watchhorn. McParlin gets in her way, but Tremblay will play the puck off of... Vint. Now Tremblay on the far boards. Chips it up for Sadie St. Germain. Edney gloves it down at center ice, sends it back into the Boston zone. Waiting for it is Claire St. Germain, and that will do it for the second period. Definitely a better period for the Blades as they get the goal, the power play goal by Christina Brown, her second of the season. A very odd 
period for both teams after that as there was a lot of back and, well, not really back and forth action, but a lot of disorganized action. Yes, it was rough and tumble. Yes, there was uh, opportunities for both teams, but they weren't structured. They were very loose. They were very fast. A different style of play than we've seen all season from the Blades, as well as the Thunder and the other games that we've seen from them. Like you said, it was a very loose structure, especially from the Blades, where normally they're very compact, they're very predictable almost, and they changed it up. They tried to get their defense more involved. You saw Watchhorn rush it up. You saw Burns deep in the corners. Maggie DeMaisie, all of them were getting involved. I think it helps when you drop Ellie Trombley back there, who's a very talented player. We've seen her play center. We've seen her play defense. They moved her back. They moved Claire St. Germain up, and it seemed to be clicking a little bit. You got pucks to the net. You got second chance, third chance, four chance opportunities, and that's how they scored their goal on that power play. Yeah, Christina cool. Brown just going to the Can going, I sing? Christina Brown just <laughs> going to the net and putting that one past uh, Erica Howe there. <laughs> Sorry, we just heard in our headsets that uh, Maggie DeMazzi wants to sing for us. She'll be joining us in just a moment here during the second intermission. Uh, that first line, now back to the Myers-Brown Kickham line. We've seen that for many games. Coach McCloskey is clearly resettling things to where he thinks his players can succeed the best. That's Aaron Kickham on that first line. That's Ellie Tremblay back playing defense. That's Claire St. Germain playing with her sister as a center. Very interesting style. It's worked so far, although probably not as as intended with a lot of loose play. Yeah, Coach McCloskey is trying to push every button that he can, switching lines, switching partners, you know, moving defensemen up to forward. You need to get something going for this team, and he seems to get get everything going in the period. They won the period one nothing, no goals allowed. They limited the shots on Genevieve Lacasse and did a great job of doing doing a better job as a team that period, getting pucks to the net, as we heard Washington say after the first. We are now joined by Blades defenseman Maggie Namazzi. Maggie, a much better second period for the Blades, uh, especially with that power play goal by Christina Brown. What do you do in the locker room to build off that momentum from that second period? You know, I think it's just a lot of positivity um, in the locker room. Luckily, we have a great group of, group of girls and um, we just stay really positive, you know, obviously we haven't had many wins, but it's just coming together as a team and going out every period as hard as we can. And Maggie, we saw the defense jump up into the play a little bit more that period. Is that something coach talked about or is that just something that you guys choose to do on your own where you're joining the rush trying to make it an odd man situation? Yeah, I think it's a bit about a both. Um, we obviously want to start scoring more goals and then it's just the more offense we get, the more goals we get, hopefully. All right, thank you so much for joining, Maggie. We won't have you sing this time, but maybe <laughs> in an upcoming uh, episode of Blades Inside Edge, now that okay. we know that's one of your talents. Great, thanks. That, that was Blades defenseman Maggie DeMaisie joining us from in front of the Blades locker room. Uh, not singing for us this time, but still, great to hear that the Blades are in high spirits, and they have momentum to build off. And you know what? As cliche and corny as it sounds, that type of momentum, that type of attitude has been very important to this Blades team. And coming off one of their better periods of the year, that's something they can build off. And this is definitely a team that they've stayed with for at least all the games down here in Massachusetts, whether it be here at the Sports Center or in Dedham at Bach Ice Arena. But it's definitely been a much better effort from this team, especially in that second period. They limit the shots on net. They do a better job of getting second chance, third chance opportunities, make sure someone's there to clean it up. The first period we saw shot after shot come from the point and have nobody there for a rebound, nobody there for a second chance, as Erica Howe has been giving up those rebounds, and they finally got the bodies they needed to the net and got one of those dirty goals. None of their goals this season have really been the pretty variety. They're a blue collar. They still count. They That's still, the big point. They, they still, still count. count. They're, they're a blue collar team, and they need to stick to that. With that, we will send it to our intermission. After two periods of play, the Boston Blades get on the board. It's now 3-1 to one advantage, Brampton Thunder. We'll be back in about 15 minutes for the final period here at New England Sports Center.
I was seven, I wore these gloves. They held this stick. Well, these skates carried me over the blue line. We won the championship. And now, it's all yours. Cool. Oh, <laughs> and this mouth guard. I'll get my own. Thanks. <laughs> the fifth season is when spirit for the game gets passed down. That's why we're proud to support over 5,000 teams. 100% drive. 100% passion. 100% effort. But women in sports get only 5% of the attention. Canada's dairy farmers believe women in sports should be seen and heard loud and clear. With fueling women's champions, we're shining a light on women athletes at every level. Join us. Hashtag champion her. I wore these gloves. They held this stick. Well, these skates carried me over the blue line. We won the championship. And now, it's all yours. Cool. Oh, <laughs> and this mouth guard. I'll get my own. Thanks. <laughs> the fifth season is when spirit for the game gets passed down. That's why we're proud to support over 5,000 teams. And that one's behind the Thunder net level, brings it out front, shot. There's a goal on Campbell to make it one nothing Inferno, power play goal. As Lovell tried to put that on, Knox with the first save, but the rebound given up. And that one knocked in by Jess Campbell to make it one nothing. As the Inferno looking to break it up now, Campbell with it now down the left wing. Campbell cuts to the front of the net, drops it. Loose shot, <laughs> puck. Crom cleaning that one up to get her goal. I believe uh, that's Crom's first goal of the season. I believe you are correct on that one. To make it 2-0. Uh... Over to Webster on the left side in her own end. Right wing pass up to Cunningham over the Thunder blue line. Passing it over to Sonia. Sonia with a shot and a goal to make it 3-0 off the blocker of Knox. Puck up front and kept away as Turnbull. <laughs> They're running up nicely into King. Campbell down the left wing. Campbell centering pass shot and a goal by Turnbull to make it 4 0. Calgary Inferno on a great shot, great pass by Jess Campbell. There's a goal, Haley Wickenheiser. I think we might have had a redirect in down low, but uh, we're going to make it 5 0. Calgary Inferno with 10.33 in the second. I, I don't think it was off an Inferno player that that redirect happened. I do believe that is going to be a goal for number 22, Haley Wickenheiser. Uh, trying to figure out. No there, goal. No, no goal. Waved off. Well, have you ever seen this before where you change the goaltender for a goal getting scored that is then waved off? One hundred percent drive. One hundred percent passion. One hundred percent effort. But women in sports get only five percent of the attention. Canada's dairy farmers believe women in sports should be seen and heard loud and clear. With fueling women's champions, we're shining a light on women athletes at every level. Join us. Hashtag champion her. I think every kid's dream is to, you know, one day play.
she was good. You made it sound like she was awful. When you're a kid, it's the same as the guys you dream of being in the NHL. I would have loved to have grown up and been a hockey player and be paid for what I love to do. It's a little tough for women to find places to play and to play at a high level. When I tell people that I play pro hockey here, everyone says, oh, there's a women's team? The best hockey that's played is played right here in the Canadian Women's Hockey League. It's like watching Canada and USA in every single game. It's not just every four years, it's just not two teams, it's five teams. I think women's hockey has progressed more as a sport than any other sport in the world in the last 15 years. The women are excellent athletes, they're really good hockey players. I think it's terrific hockey. What we need to do now is get the fan to just come out and support us and, and follow us. All right, ladies, we got to be focused. We got to be ready to go. Big start, big start. You've got um, the top players in the world need a place to play to train for those three years prior to the year of the Olympics. So each team's going to have four or five or six of them. They're very serious. They're very focused. They're very talented. Instantly, you've got the best elite hockey, I think, in the world. We have some really intense rivalries. All the girls have been playing against each other their entire lives. Yeah, there's an energy there that I think is, is different than NHL or um, WHL. For the most part, it's nearly full contact. Especially at this level, the girls are so strong and so fast that it's unavoidable. When you go into the corner, the corner battles, I think, are really similar. For us, it has to do a lot with skill. There's not the, the big body checks or the hitting. Uh, it's still a very aggressive. Like, you don't get the huge open ice hits but you still have a lot of physicality around the boards. Get the speed going, guys. We have uh, players who have retired from NCAA. They're out of the school. They're out of CIS. They want to keep playing. There's no money in it for them. So what we have on the squad is actually athletes that are just burning to play hockey. We had 22 Olympians that, that uh, attended the Olympics in Sochi. So you can imagine the level of hockey uh, that is being played here. Here we go, here we go, nice break up, Keith! People who play can relate to this. It, it's an escape from real life. You know, with school being difficult, hockey, it's an escape from that. And that's something I'm not ready to give up yet. In general, they're putting their careers on hold to be able to play this game that they love. I think I'd miss it too much right now if I were to quit. I just love to play the sport that I love, and, and so, you know, it's worth all the sacrifice and, and everything that comes with it. There is a life um, during hockey. We sometimes help them find jobs if, if they want to come to a certain city and they have never been there. I looked for work after I moved here. Hockey was, you know, number one, and uh, I was going to make it work after that. I've been really fortunate. Uh, my company is extremely supportive. Extra vacation days if I need and, uh, you know, leaving early when I need to. They've even come out to a lot of my games, which has been pretty cool. A lot of employers uh, are kind of excited to have a player of that caliber because they're filled up with uh, commitment and focus and discipline and, and work ethic and that kind of thing. I love the fact that 95% of them are, you know, Ivy League graduates and the fact of being brilliant in what they do. I always say to people, if you want to really see the true passion of hockey, follow one of our players. It's hard to get a lot of games in. You have to play on the weekends because everyone has a full-time job. I'll have to take a vacation day on a Friday. We'll leave Friday, 5 a.m. the airport, play Friday night, play Saturday night, play Sunday morning, go straight to the airport after our game, get on a flight, get in at 2 in the morning or so, and then I have to be at work the next morning. So, you know, that's, that's really tough. You maneuver your life around your kids, you maneuver your life around your partners, you maneuver your life around your family, and all knowing perfectly well that, one, you're playing because you love to play, but two, you're playing because you're making it different for those that are coming in the future. The role models that we are creating within this Canadian Women's Hockey League is, is massive in the fact that 
everything they represent, everything they stand for is, is what I would want my daughter to grow up to be because they're following a dream and a passion. So, you know, in the past seven years, I think we've come a long way in recognition, but you're competing with so much, I mean, you know, in the entertainment world. I'm a true believer that the foundation that has been built with the CWHL, it is the one that will bring us that success of a professional women's hockey league and eventually get the players paid. When I started playing, I had no other option, you know, I was playing with the boys um, or nothing really. There's been so much growth, so hopefully one day I'll get the exposure uh, that it deserves. You know, women's hockey is not NHL hockey. It never will be the same as the NHL game because of the physiological differences, but it doesn't mean that it can't be a great stand on its own game. It's baby steps and it's not obviously happening as fast as everybody would like it to, but you know, good people are involved with the league right now and more and more are becoming interested. I think this is a good product, one we can all be proud of. There is no reason that we can't grow this sport and get it to a level where women can play professionally and earn a living doing it just like men do. When the Olympics happened, it was interesting the amount of calls I received, the unfairness of our women not being paid. And how could we have men competing for the gold medal and making, you know, $25 billion with their salaries all added up and our women making $0? In all honesty, the 13 million people who watched that final game, they made an impact with the sponsors. The simplicity for us is that in order to support our league, in order to make sure our players get paid, we need you. We need you to buy a ticket. And in $15, you will secure the future for women to be paid. On CWHL Live, my name is Chris Knobloch, joined by my broadcast partner, Steve Ventresca. After two periods of play, Brampton has a 3-1 lead over the Boston Blades, who got on the board in the second period with a power play goal, a 5-on-3 power play goal by assistant captain Christina Brown. Steve, this is a big period coming up for the Blades. Winless in regulation this season in their past 10 games, 1-9 overall with two points. What do they need to do to build off the momentum of a very loose, very free second period to tie the game, get the game close? What do they need to do? I think they need to keep doing much of the same. Activate the defense, join the rush, make it a four-on-three situation, three-on-two situation if you can, and keep getting pucks to the net. Pucks and bodies to the net. Like I said, they're a blue-collar team. You gotta just keep grinding away at it. And you can't score two goals off one shot. You gotta get the first one before you can get the second one. So hopefully they get back on the board early, get this momentum going, and start the third period off on the right foot. They put up 13 shots in that second period for a total of 17 so far in the game, and held the Thunder to 11, 11 easy saves for Genevieve Lacasse, it seemed there in the second period. Much more of the same, they gotta do a good job defensively, keeping shots to the outside, limiting those home run passes that we saw more and more of as that period went on by the Thunder, and countering with shots and rebound chances of their own. Now, we've seen a bunch of different line combinations, but at that, in that second period, we saw the Myers-Brown kick em line. That was the scoring line for the Blades on that power play. It appears they are the line that will start this third period. I would expect to see a very, very fast start from this Blades team, and that's really what they need to do to capitalize on this momentum they're bringing from that second period. Burns, Watchhorn, Myers-Brown kick them out there, driving the net quickly, getting pucks to the net, trying to get those opportunities quickly against what we know is a very strong Thunder team before they can get that momentum, before they can get their passing in sync. And this this top line, as you mentioned, Brown, Kickham, and Myers, they're a very good puck possession line. So it's a good line to start the period off. We saw them possess the puck for much of the first period and look for Tara Watchorn to get more involved with the offense here in the third period, as she is likely to do. We now send it back down to ice level for the start of the third period as Christina Brown wins the faceoff for the Blades, sends it back to Tara Watchorn, rattles it off the boards and into Brampton zone on a fresh seat of, sheet of ice. Kickham goes back to play it, sends it over to Myers. Myers fights for it with Burchard. Now coming in are Styles and Kickham. Coming away with it is Burchard. She sends it over to Fortino, her defensive partner, who backhands it back to Burchard behind the Brampton net. Now Fortino along the far side faceoff circle. Sends a home run pass for Jess Jones. Leaves it off for Retray. She has one person to beat in Watchhorn. Watchhorn is able to interfere with her just enough to prevent that shot. 
Now Brouchard attempts a heavy shot, getting into the skate of Meg Myers, who has blocked a number of shots today, and the puck will rattle out into the defensive zone as Myers clears it. Now Jones brings it in with Rattray, and there's going to be an offsides call as Rattray was just a step in front of Jones. Faceoff comes into neutral zone with 19.09 left in regulation. And we've talked about those home run passes. That one coming up from 14.02 to Jess Jones. A nice one-touch with speed through the neutral zone is Jamie Lee Rattray. And she tried to go through the legs and around Tyler Watchhorn, but a good stand-up D play by the captain. Maggie DeMacy sends it into the, blade, the Brampton zone. Edney is back to play it. Now puck over to Vint. Vint sends it to McParland in neutral ice. McParland gets it back to in front of the Boston net. But Maggie DeMacy is there. Now a, a backhand attempt by Vint, saved by LaCasse. Puck jumps over the net and into the near boards as McParland goes back to give chase. Now LaRock winds, fires, looking for McIntosh in front of the net. She can't get a stick on it, and the shot goes wide. Now Duncan gives chase. McParland holds, fires, and a beautiful save by LaCasse, who lays out. Puck rattles into the boards, and getting a stick on it is, Meg, uh, is Sarah Duncan. Sends it up for Rachel Farrell. Old school save there by Jen LaCasse as she goes down to the two-pad stack and flails the arm up. Robbing McParland in front of the net. Now McIntosh brings it in, shovels it on net, and LaCasse holds on with her glove to cause a defensive zone face-off in the Boston zone. And one of the flashier saves that we've seen from Jen LaCasse, she's made a number of us... I don't know if she us. needed to do that, but it really looked good on camera. She's made a <laughs> number of us to choose from for her flashiest, best, most memorable save, but that one sticks out for sure for right now. Waker sends the... Puck cross ice, Tremblay back to play it for Boston. Giannino fights with, with si Simmons along the far side. Now a cast out of the net to play the puck herself. Watchorn gives chase. Fielding Montgomery leaves it off for King. King skates it back behind the Boston net over towards the far corner. Tremblay gets in the way, but getting to it first will be Montgomery. Now Giannino attempts to clear. Simmons winds, fires, pad save by LaCasse. And the puck will be loose behind the Boston net. Now Watchorn, up to Giannino. Giannino attempts to clear, cannot, and Tremblay will come away with the puck. Fielding Montgomery harasses her in front of LaCasse's net, and Watchorn will shovel it towards Giannino as she attempts to clear once again. She is unable to do so, and now Watchorn will control along the far side faceoff circle. Watchorn sends it into the neutral zone. Whitaker is right there to slap it back into the Boston zone. Watchorn again sends it cross ice, this time into the blue line boards, in Brampton zone, no icing, and now Rattray will take it out of the Brampton zone. Rattray sends it up for Jones, DeMaisie gets a puck on, uh, stick on it, sends it up for Brown, Brown into the Brampton zone. She loses the puck, Rattray brings it back into Boston zone, she has Jones with her, Rattray attempts to beat Burns, it can't, and skates it back behind the Boston net and will have a stoppage of play. I believe the net came off is what the whistle was for, but... Maggie DeMaisie making a risky play in the neutral zone, stepping up, missing Jamie Lee Rattray, missing the puck, and it goes in two-on-one, and her partner, Drew Burns, as she tries to go through the legs and around looking for help before that net came off, luckily, for the Blades. Face-off one by Brampton. Burchard leaves it off for Fortino. Fortino looks for Jones at center. Jones shot saved by LaCasse, and she will hold on for a face-off. Another big save by Jen LaCasse, and I mentioned the risky play there by Maggie DeMazzi in, in the neutral zone, but those are the risky plays that you might need to get back into this game. There's 16.41 remaining in the third period, and you're down by two goals. Face-off one by Boston. Again, a shot blocked from Burchard by Aaron Kickham this time as Brown goes down. Back by the Boston blue line, Meg Myers and Jones fight for the puck. Jones falls over, and Myers will come away with it, chipping it into the Brampton zone. Giving chases Fortino. Behind her is Aaron Kickham. Fortino will send the puck back to her defensive partner, Burchard. Burchard sends it back to her. Intercepting is DeMaisie. She puts a hit on Styles, and the puck comes loose back to Burchard. Now Burchard. Over for Rattray. Getting possession is Brown. Brown shovels it towards the net. Kickham has a stick on it. Attempts to center. Is unable to. And the puck will go back behind the net where Myers is. Now Duncan sets up. Winds. Fires. Puck loses possession of the puck, and now Rattray is all alone in front. She, it's Rattray versus LaCasse. Sick handles and loses possession of the puck on the breakaway. LaCasse doesn't need to make the save, and the puck is now loose in the Boston zone. 
And it looked like Jen LaCasse had her the whole way before losing that puck with Jamie Lou Retray. And just a turnaround slap shot it seemed out of frustration by Retray after she mishandled it on the breakaway. Now Duncan controls the puck in the Boston zone, sends it up off the boards for Shea. It ends up being a shot right wide of the net and will be icing on the blades with 15.29 left in the third period. 3-1 to one, Brampton leads. And it was a blocked shot. Sarah Duncan wound up at the point before that one was blocked down and sent free was Retray. But you got to have someone back. I know you're down two goals. I know you're trying. You're pressing. You're trying everything you can to get another one past Erica Howe. But someone has to be back. It can't just be General Cass all by herself back there. Face off one by Megan Shea. Now Farrell skates it out of the Boston zone. Watchhorn jumps up to be a forward. Farrell looks for her, but instead rattles it back behind the Brampton net where Howe will settle it. Now Edney. She has McParland with her who sets the pick. Edney skates it out of the Boston zone. Getting in the way is Watchhorn, but the puck comes off. Or rather, the puck comes back into the Boston zone where it will be icing as Watchhorn wisely got her stick out of the way. That was a very veteran move by Tara Watchhorn. And a veteran move as well to step up just before the red line forcing Sarah Edney to chip that off the boards and go all the way down for an icing. Very smart play by the crafty veteran Watchhorn. Face off one by Keefe. She looks for Farrell, but LaRock is on her. Farrell comes away with the puck looking for Watchhorn. Her lane, her passing lane is blocked by McParlin. LaRock comes away with the puck. Skates it out of the Brampton zone and across center ice. McParlin is with her, but she leaves it off for McIntosh. McIntosh flips it towards the net and goes off the hand of Ellie Tremblay. Tremblay looks to for the puck. McIntosh center, shot saved by Lacasse on Vint, and the puck will squirt out. Now Edney. Sends a shot towards the center of the net. It goes off the, the shin of McIntosh, and the puck will come out to neutral ice. Puck flipped in by Rebecca Vint as Brampton goes off for a change. But pass to Watchhorn in the back. Watchhorn looking for that home run pass. Giannino will step up and prevents the icing. Now Claire St. Germain comes in, but instead it's recovered by Brampton. Now intercepting the pass is Maggie DeMaisie. Her shot goes off the skate of a Brampton player, and Terracation will now bring it out for the Thunder. Coming away with it in the neutral zone is Clara St. Germain. Leaves off for her sister Sadie. Instead it goes loose, and Whitaker will bring it to the Boston zone. Two on one, stick save by LaCasse on Whitaker's shot. Not a hard shot there. And coming back the other way is DeMaisie. Sent in by Whitaker again. Pad save by LaCasse. Claire St. Germain now rattles it over towards Giannino, but Whitney Hannahorn keeps it in. Now Cation at the blue line. Bites past two blades and sends the puck towards Whitney Hannahorn. Hannahorn loses the possession to DeMazy. DeMazy attempts to skate it out and does so. Cation on her gives her a nice whack on the shins. DeMazy brings it coast to coast looking for a centering pass, but Giannino was out of position as she had how beat. Now Brown looking for a shot. Goes off of Burchard. Haitian attempts to clear, cannot. Burns shovels it towards the center of the net. Kick him, looking for a shot. Saved by Howe. Rebound, save again by Howe. And coming the other way is Retray. Retray has Jones with her. Sends it up for Jones, but getting in the way is Sarah Duncan. And now the puck will come back out to neutralize as Brown recovers. Now kick him along the near side. Shovels it back into the Brampton zone. Howe behind her own net. Meg Myers gives chase, but coming away with it is Burchard. Sends it over to Fortino. Fortino. Off the boards towards Retray, getting a stick in there is Myers. Myers' shot, or pass rather, goes towards Burchard, who sends it up to Retray, now into the Boston zone. Retray, centering pass for Jones. Jones deeks, fires, and scores as she beat LaCasse with the backhand. It's now 4-1 to one after end-to-end -end action. Brampton has that lead. And heartbreak on one end as it was Erica Howe sprawling out, stopping Brown, Kickham, and Meg Myers, who all had a shot at that puck. It was just sort of pinballing around in the zone from below the circles down. They had three, four, five whacks at it, it seemed, before that puck squirted it free, and back come the thunder before Jess Jones makes one nice move on the backhand and puts it up and under the bar. Pass Genevieve LaCasse, make this a four to one game. And it's almost seeming out of reach now for the Blazers. Just 12.20 to go in the third period. Blades look for possession in their own zone. Rebecca Vint fights with Brown. Coming in to help is Watchhorn, who sets that pick with Brown. Now Watchhorn will skate it into the Brampton zone. 
has Edney to beat, does so, but getting in the way is the referee. Now looking for a centering pass is Watchorn. Watchorn along the far side boards. Sends it to Kickham. Kickham's shot goes wide. In there to recover is Tremblay. Tremblay. Sent pass over to Watchorn. Watchorn winds, fire, shot, save, rebound, save again by Howe as that first shot from Watchorn went off of her mask. Tara Watchorn trying to do it herself. You mentioned she had one defender to beat. It was the referee, actually, that she had to beat as well because slips past the defender and the referee's right there to knock the puck away. Tara Watchorn's probably pretty frustrated about that one, but able to get a good shot off. Another rebound chance for the Blades, and they got to keep firing that puck on net if they want to get back in this thing. Now King skates it out of the Brampton zone into the Boston zone and flips it over to Maisie. She attempts to elbow DeMazi out of the way, but DeMazi wasn't there, so she elbows the air. Meanwhile, the puck goes into the far corner. Burns looking for Shea to clear. Shea is unable to as she's harassed by two Thunder players. Instead, the puck scores back to Burns. Burns will send it off the boards towards uh, DeMazi. Now Burns back behind the net. Fieldy Montgomery goes after her. She deeks away from Montgomery and sends it out of the Boston zone where LaRock then immediately sends it back in. LaCasse settles the puck behind her own net. Burns attempts to clear, goes into the skates of King, and Burns will recover. Now over to DeMazie who shuffles it past Richard for Farrell. Farrell completes the pick set by DeMazie, sends it over towards Burns. Burns rattles it around the boards for Farrell. Farrell looks to clear and does so. Home run pass to DeMazie. She has no one to beat. Maggie Demese shot, score! Maggie Demese with her first professional goal. It's 4-2 on a beautiful play. And I'm not sure what Maggie Demese was doing way up at the far blue line as one of the defensemen, but we talked with her in the period about being aggressive, joining the rush, knowing when to pick your spots, and I guess that was one of them as there's Rachel Farrell and Drew Burns playing catch back and forth behind the net. Demese slips out behind the defenders, calls for that puck, and gets it right on her tape there. I believe it was Drew Burns who sent that one right up on the money. And a beautiful shot. Snapshot up under the crossbar, beating Erica Howe glove hand. Couldn't have placed it any better. And it's a 4-2 game with 10.45 remaining. Oddly enough, that was something Maggie Demese was working on during practice this week, beating Genevieve Lacasse a couple of times, and that pays big dividends for the Blades. Now Burchard winds and fires, and it goes off the skate of Jess Jones and out of play, as back the other way come the Thunder. And we know that you're going to have to take risks to get back into this game. We know you're going to have to sort of surprise the Thunder to get the odd man opportunities. And Maggie Demese surprised everyone as a defender. The puck's in her own zone, and she's at the far blue line calling for that one, and it pays off with a beautiful shot. That was a play that can bring quite a bit of momentum your way from one of the, from the number four defenseman for the Blades, and into the Brampton zone comes Sadie St. Germain. She looks for Giannino, instead the puck comes out to Duncan. Now Giannino along the far side. Turns it over to Jones. Jones attempts to clear. Cannot as Claire St. Germain keeps it in. And it will now be cleared by Burchard. Now Lacasse shuffles it past behind her own net. Giannino comes up with the puck. Skates it out of the Boston zone. And back into the Brampton zone. Four Thunder defenders are on her. And they and the puck is shuffled into the Boston bench. Not over the boards, but through the boards as the door was open. And we will have a face off in the neutral zone. And we were talking about how blue-collar this team is. You know, it doesn't seem like they score pretty goals. That last one by Megan Maisie was a pretty one. But don't be fooled. This team needs to still get pucks to the net, keep doing their job, and work hard. This team works very hard, and they're not going to be cheated on any goal that they do get. And since her goal, Maggie DeMaisie has left the ice for only a minute. She's now playing with Ellie Tremblay, but that is her third straight defensive partner. So she is going to see some constant ice time. As they look to recapture the Demazi magic. We have another stoppage of play, and it looks like we will have a face-off in the Brampton zone as the puck went off of the netting. And it appears it could be a delay of game on Sarah Edney, it appears, as she's arguing with the referee if it went right over or not. But it looks like she's going to lose that argument as players set tend to do with the referees. They don't normally win those ones once they're called for a penalty on their way to the sin bin. But the referee's still undefeated here in the CWHL. A power play for the Blades, down by two goals, with 9.39 remaining in the third period. This is just what the Blades need 
after that big goal by DeMaisi. Face off one by Brampton in their own zone. Going back to get it is Brown. Brown looks for Myers. Myers along the far side. Has Watchorn with her and passes her to Puck. Watchorn winds, fires, saved by Howe. Rebound, scores wide. Going, giving chase is Vint. Vint attempts to clear and does so off the body of Watchorn. And the puck will go back into the Boston zone. And another big slap shot by Tara Watchorn, creating that rebound chance in front. And a couple of whacks at it before the Thunder are able to clear it down the ice. Boston breaks out of their own zone. Brought in by Brown. Leaves it off for Myers. Myers looking for Watchorn and sends, sends it to Brown. Brown looks for Burns. Burns in front of the net. Shuffles it forward. Getting her stick in the way is Fortino. Burns gives a whack at it. And now Fortino comes the other way. It'll be Fortino versus Watchorn. Fortino attempts a shot or loses possession as she attempted the shot. And Brown will take possession of the puck. Now Brown back into the Brampton zone. One minute left on the power play for the Blades. Brown looking for help as she and LaRock fight for it in the corner. Coming in to help is Kickham. Kickham. And Brown exchanging the puck. Puck comes out to Richards and in the neutral zone to Montgomery where Watchorn will bat it back into Brampton's zone. Now Simmons behind her own net. Sends it out of the Boston zone. Uh, the Brampton zone, rather. And Genevieve Lacasse will hold the puck in the Boston zone as the Blades set up for their final rush of this power play. Now Burns from behind her own net, looking for a home run pass and shuffles it. Getting in the way is Lara, but she can't hold possession of the puck. Shea loses a handle on it. Now Retray coming in on Lucas. Save there. Rebound. Save again. And no goal as Lacasse apparently dislodged the net in a full butterfly. She made probably four saves there in the full butterfly in a split. And the play was whistled dead before the puck crossed the goal line. And we've seen Jen LaCasse do that a number of times this year. Just take away the entire bottom half of the net going post to post in the splits. And Jamie Lou Trey must be frustrated. She's going to see Jen LaCasse in her nightmares tonight. That's twice on the breakaway that Jen LaCasse has stymied Retray as we're back to five on five action. Now Burchard in her own zone. Shea slaps the stick on the ice, but Bouchard completes the pass to McIntosh. Getting in the way is Shea. She dispossesses Vint, but the puck scores back to Fortino. Fortino skates with the puck. Over to Bouchard. Back to Fortino. Up to McParland, who can't get a stick on it. And now DeMaisi will send another home run pass that's shuffled into the Brampton zone by Shea to prevent the icing. Giving chases Farrell. Said coming out is Fortino. She sends a cross ice to McIntosh. McIntosh bounces off the boards and into the Boston zone. Lacasse thinks about playing it, but instead Ellie Tremblay will be back to play. Tremblay attempts to clear. She sends it up to Giannino, who does clear it. Falling down is Edney, and the puck squirts in on Jen Lacasse, who handles it behind her own net. She beats Retray. Retray tries to come away from the puck, trips up Ellie Tremblay. No call. Retray again going for the net. Puck is sticked away by Claire St. Germain, and we have a tripping penalty coming up on the Blades. And it looks like Tara Watchhorn is guilty of a trip as she can't believe it. She's shaking her head as I believe it was Retray trying to make a move out of the corner and got tangled up in the feet, it seemed, of Tara Watchhorn. Nothing malicious there and goes down. That's a tough call, especially after scoring that second goal. And especially with 6.38 left, you have the momentum going, not much time left, and you have to spend two minutes of it on the kill with arguably your best defender in the box. Face off one by Brampton. Jones attempts a shot on net, goes off of Burns' skate. Now Burchard over to Retray. Retray looking for revenge against Lacasse, instead sends it over to Jones. Jones looking for a centering pass. DeMaisi goes down, prevents her from shooting, and now Retray will put it from behind the Boston net. Now Fortino. Winds, fakes a shot, holds the puck, and sends it to Burchard. Burchard and Fortino swap places. Burchard over to Fortino, can't find a passing lane. Now Retray. Retray almost loses a handle on it, sends it out to Fortino. Now Burchard. The net closes as Retray again holds the puck. Shot score! Retray beats Lacasse to the right hand side, and that's 5-2 to two Thunder with a power play goal, their second power play goal of the game. And that was 41 seconds straight of offensive pressure 
by this Thunder team as Jamie Lee Retre after some beautiful passing around the point by Fortino and Burchard finds Retre in the high slot and with a screen in front Drew Burns seemed to have been blocking our goalie's vision beats LaCasse, LaCasse Blocker hand and it's 5-2 to two with only 5.50 to go here in the third period as things don't look so great for the Blades right now Demazie sends a puck in on net. That'll be a save as Howe gets her stick on it. 5.40 left in regulation. 5-2 Brampton Thunder. Richards attempts to clear the Brampton zone. Barely does as she gets tangled up with Shea. Fighting forward is Keith. Keith and Farrell and Richards all fight for it. And the puck will eventually bounce out to Tremblay who brings it back into her own zone and then attempt to settle. She's harassed by Cation. Cation comes away with it, sends it over to Richards, but dispossessing her is Tremblay. Tremblay has a one-on-two opportunity here, has to beat Whitaker and can't do so as Whitaker gets her stick on the puck. And it will be shuffled back in by Megan Shea. Five minutes remaining in regulation. Skating out with it is LaRoche. She crosses the center line and chips it into the Boston zone off the boards. Giving chase is Burns as Watchorn and she switch places. But instead, she'll chip it up to the third defenseman, also the center, Claire St. Germain. St. Germain goes down as she gets tangled with McParland, and Edney will bring the puck across center ice and into the Boston zone. Vint behind the Boston net. She and Watchhorn match up on what could have been a check there, and Burns will attempt to clear it. She sends it up to Claire St. Germain, who sends it back to Burns. Burns looks for Giannino on a home run pass, but can't get the pass off. Now Giannino shuffles it into the Brampton zone. Edney back to play it. Claire St. Germain is on her. Puck sent out to McIntosh at center ice. She's looking for help. Can't find it as there were four blades in the zone. Set a loose puck. Goes right to McParlin. McParlin shot. Saved by LaCasse, who covers it up on another beautiful save by the Olympian. Again, going down to that sprawling post-to-post -post split. As she got that one with the blocker hand, as that one was elevated, drops her stick, abandons all hope, and just covers it up with her free hand. As Jen LaCasse is doing everything she can to keep her team in the game tonight. Jen LaCasse does any more splits. We're going to see Amanda Caridi tomorrow just based on soreness. Tomorrow's game is at 10.50 a.m. at Rodman Arena in Walpole. Tickets are available online at shop.cwhl.ca as the Blades and Brampton Thunder face off for the final time in the regular season this year. Now DeMaisi attempts to clear the zone. She's unable to as King gets a stick in there and three Brampton Thunder members come in. Now Montgomery leaves it off for Burchard. Back to Montgomery. She misses the pass and Meg Myers will come away with it. Myers has Brown with her. Brown comes away with the puck. Has Fortino to beat. Is unable to do so. Shovels it on net. Saved by Howe. Comes out to Washburn. Washburn winds. Fires. Shot goes towards Myers. Myers can't get the shot off. The redirect. And Boston controls. Shot saved as Myers attempts another shot on Howe. And the puck will bounce out to Fortino. Fortino. Cross center ice. Sends the puck into Boston's end with three minutes left in regulation. Watchhorn controls the puck behind her net. Jones and Retray both on her. And she threads the needle and sends it up to Myers. Now Keith attempts to beat Whitaker. Whitaker will bring it back into the Boston zone. Or no, as Retray overshot and she was unable to bring it in. Now Retray beats past Farrell. Over towards Jones. Now Whitaker. Whitaker winds, fires, shot saved by LaCasse as it goes off of her skate. Rebound comes out to the near side. Tremblay intercepts the centering pass and brings it out of the Boston zone. Now Tremblay. She has Simmons to beat. Does, is unable to do so as we have a penalty coming up on Brampton. And the Blades have 2.27 left in this game and will be going on the power play. And it looks like it's going to be an interference call. And it looks like Jess Jones, I believe, is on her way to the box as the Blades will have 2.27 remaining, down by three, goal, three goals, and up one player currently. Oh, well, excuse me. It's going to be 19 Simmons on her, on her way to the box for an interference call. As the Blades will start with DeMazy, Rochern on the point with Kickham Brown and Myers up front. Face off one by Brampton set into the Boston zone in front of Genevieve LaCasse, who is watching the Boston bench. Now Watchhorn, across the Boston blue line, up to Brown. Brown into the, into the Brampton zone off the referee's skate, but it will be recovered 
by Brampton, who send it down the ice. Now Lacasse. Home run pass to Watchhorn at center ice. Coming away with it is Myers. Lacasse prepares to make her sprint for the bench with a minute 30 left in the power play. Edney controls the puck behind the Brampton net. Rattles it around the boards. Watchhorn settles it. Montgomery in on her. Leaves it off for Brown. Brown over to DeMaisy. DeMaisy winds, fires, shot, save as Kickham was in front of Howe's net. Now Brown along the near side. Lacasse out to the hash marks in front of her own net. Watchhorn winds and fires. Or winds and looks for DeMaisy. DeMaisy looking for the center of the ice. Can't find it. Sends it to Kickham. Now DeMaisy. Looking for Brown. Brown in front of the net. Attempts a backhand shot saved by Howe as she shuffled it on net. And with 52 seconds left on the power play, Lacasse is still in net for Boston. And it appears with a minute 19 left in regulation, they're going to ride this one out. And a couple good chances so far on the power play. Megan Amazy with a booming shot. Not quite to our watch horns, but a big shot from the point that Howe had to knock away with the blocker hand. And... The Blades, a lot of things to build off of. The power plays looked better as this game's gone on. They've got plenty of chances so far. And a 5-2 to two game against this team. You saw a little bit more offensive power, a little bit more offensive output from this team tonight. Face off one by Brampton. They clear the zone. King brings it out. Keith back to play it. She falls down. King looks for the centering pass where Vint. Vint shot saved by Lacasse, who's come all the way out to the faceoff circle to cut down the angle. A nice pad save there by Genevieve Lacasse. And good recognition of knowing she has a split second to recognize that puck's going over to Vint. And she slides out to the bottom of the faceoff dots to come up with a big pad save and hang on. Shot on net. Lacasse makes a save as Vint comes crashing in on net. Again, Rebecca Vint playing a great game for Brampton, but this time Lacasse is betters her. And she's been a thorn in the side of this team all series long, and we've been calling it a series. It's game five right now, but her speed and her skill has really caused fits for the Blades, especially on the back end. Puck goes wide with 20 seconds left on the power play for the Blades. They're in their own defensive zone as Burns recovers. 15 seconds left in the power play, 40 seconds left in regulation. Now Burns, up to Tremblay. Tremblay runs into her own player and loses possession of the puck. Coming back the other way are the Thunder, but Burns will get possession. Now Keith, across the blue line. Dispossessed again by the Thunder. It's Fortino. She has McIntosh with her. Shea gets a stick in the way, but McIntosh is still there. Penalties expired, 15 seconds left in regulation. McParland looking for another opportunity. Now Richards over to McParland. McParland looks for a centering pass, can't find it. Five seconds left in regulation as Tremblay will run out the clock by batting around the boards. And that will do it here at New England Sports Center. The final score, Brampton 5, Blades 2. A well-played game by the Boston Blades. The only downside is that they've played many well-played games. They have not turned into victories. They are now winless in their first 11 games. It, it's not going to count anymore for moral victories. Good games only get you so far. You need to start putting some points on the board. Start getting yourself climbing in the standings if you want to save this season. And right now, they're playing tough. They're playing competitive games, but they're still coming out on the wrong end. Jen Lacasse can only do so much in her end. Tara Watchhorn's out there for more than half of every game, it seems. And they just don't have the firepower up front. They're trying to get it from the back end. I, I believe their defensemen have scored more than their forwards have this season. That is correct. Especially if you're counting Ellie Tremblay as a defenseman, yep. which we she saw scored play both today. of her goals as a defenseman. She has two. Watchhorn has two. DeMaisy has one. Meanwhile, for forwards, Myers has one. Brown has two. Shea has two. So it's the same amount right now. Brown also has that shootout winner, but the reality is the defense has really been the offensive strong point here for the Blades team. Yeah, and the Blades just saluting the crowd here that came out to watch them tonight at New England Sports Center. And you mentioned that the forwards, they're just not quite getting it done up front. The firepower's not there. If you look, their first line has three of their five forward goals, with Megan Shea having the alone two. And she's bounced around. She was on the first line tonight to start. 
So they had all their goals to start on the first line. It was all five before being bounced down to sort of try to balance it out and find that find that spark to get this team going. And it really did start this team going in the second period. As you saw, the score was two to one or two to two. Excuse me. After the after giving up three in the first, you heard Washhorn say they just didn't have their legs under them. Hopefully, they'll have a better result tomorrow and be more prepared to play at 10:30 in the morning. That is correct. 10:30 tomorrow morning. At least it's a short memory. This is one of the better games they played against the Thunder. Unfortunately, they played really two quality games. This one being included, the first game that we saw in Boston against the Thunder, the one that the Blades lost by a 2-1 to one score, both were quality games by the, th- the, the Blades. Unfortunately, they've lost all five to the Thunder. Now, the beautiful thing about the CWHL, and this is a beautiful thing about a league that has five teams, you got to get in that fourth spot. The defending Clarkson Cup champions can do that. They are only one point behind the Toronto Furies. However, in order to beat them, they're going to need to get some wins here. And not just shootout wins, not moral victories. To quote Al Davis, the late Al Davis, not the great, but the late Al Davis, just win, baby. And that's what it's going to come down to. Toronto just lost 9-5 to to the Calgary Inferno, a game you could have heard on CWHL Live. So tomorrow's game still holds a lot of significance. A Blades win and a Furies loss means the Blades are in fourth place and in a playoff spot. And they need to be creative in terms of doing so. We know that this roster has been depleted from years past. They have five returning players in theory, and you're still in it. You're not out of it just yet. You may look at your record and get down on yourself and, you know, start feeling sorry for yourself. Oh, we don't have a win in regulation yet. We have a shootout win against Toronto, and it came all the way back in the first weekend of the season. But you're still right there. That's the beauty of the CWHL, as you mentioned, Chris. And they still need to look at that and come out and play hard. I know moral victories get you nowhere, but it helps build confidence. This is a far cry from the blowouts that we saw early on in the season. And to wrap things up from today's game, we do have the three stars as they were announced. The third star, the lone star of the Boston Blades was Maggie Amazing with that beautiful third period. The CWHL and CWHL Live would like to thank Canada's Dairy Farmers Fueling Women Champion Program for their valuable support in presenting CWHL streaming in 2015-16. We'd also like to thank our league sponsors, Sportsnet, Wingsport, Bauer, Tim Hortons, Toyota, Molson Coors, The Globe and Mail, Bridgestone, Bridge Force, Gong Show Gear, OMGs, The Calgary Flames, Toronto Maple Leafs, and Montreal Canadiens for their valuable support.